Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ted Gardner, and uh, we're here at the Cheviot Branch of the Public Library of Cincinnati and uh, Hamilton County. Beautiful facility, and uh, Kathy is uh, being very helpful here on the camera. And uh, we're going to interview Mr. George Petro, who served in the United States Navy, and uh, who had a great, great service record, a very proud uh, uh, man of World War II. Uh, George, where were you born? I was born in Canton, Ohio. Oh, yeah. January 31st, 1923. 1923. Oh, that makes that. me 83 years old today. That's, uh, Plus. Just, well, I, that's uh, that's very interesting in Canton, Ohio, of course, uh, opposite corner of the state from where we are. Yeah, but now <laughs> uh, Canton is a very interesting town. I know that you you're uh, you come from a Greek background. Yes. Were your parents uh, immigrants to this country, yes, or your they, grandparents? No, my parents. My really? Parents, yeah, they they didn't come from originally. They came from Turkey. Oh, they were yes. Greeks living in Turkey. In they were Christians. And Isn't that something? We never intermarried with the Turks. Right. But they've been there since uh, before Greece was Greece. It was called Ionia. Absolutely. The Ionia so I think my people were there then. Well, that's that's really very interesting because uh, a lot of people in this country don't know about things like that, and it's so it's so important because. Uh, it's been said over and over, uh, I don't know how many millions of times, but we are a nation of immigrants. And uh, 90, at that time, I mean, the turn of the 20th century, 90% 90, 90 of them came from Europe and uh, Southern Europe and around the Mediterranean. Uh, so you were born in 1923, uh, you went to school, just started school. I was kindergarten in first and second grade. I think I came to Cincinnati on July uh, uh, July 4th, 1930. After the crash mm -hmm. of 30, uh, of 29, my dad, he was working at Timken Roller Bearing Company oh, yes. as a laborer. Big, big and he, he came to Cincinnati right after that because we owned the house. Mm -hmm. And we even had furnished rooms for the other people, the Greeks that, that came from the old country to work and to send the money for to get their people back and everything. You know, right. that's what was going on at that time. Right. And so my dad knew there was going to be some bad news, and he came to Cincinnati and opened up a barber shop because he was a barber mm -hmm. in the old country. So, and uh, right right by the old Rialto show, well, you know, between 12th and 13th on Vine Street. That's where he had his barber shop. How about that? And you had brothers and sisters. I had. I have an older brother, and uh, he's he was in the Army Air Corps. When it was Air Corps, and he was in. He went in 1937. Oh boy! Yeah, he was an air air mechanic. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was uh, A and E airplanes and engines. He could right. do everything. He was a top notch mechanic. Oh, my youngest brother Pete. Uh, he he graduated from college. He worked at the Lumpkin Airport as a hangar boy, and then all the money he made, he spent it for airplane flying lessons. Uh -huh. And he got to be a, a pilot. A, not only a pilot, he was a test. He was a, a, a teacher there. He taught instructor. for we taught for a, a Queen City Flying Service. Oh, he was an instructor, yeah. flight instructor. So uh, he was there, and then they they drafted him when the the Chinese was coming over the Yalu River, and that's when they drafted him and they put him in the infantry. You know, here he is. A, oh my goodness! This is this is the United <laughs> States Army. Oh, there was. A, yeah, I know. There was so much of that sort of thing yeah, going yeah. on. Mis, he, misfitting people. But thank God he didn't go to Korea. He, he went to Germany. Okay. And so he, he he spent his time there, and, and he was a, he's a funny guy. I don't believe he's. Not no military guy like my brother, oldest brother and I were uh -huh. military. You know, you yeah, had that fitting. But yeah, but he he did. He was he's strictly a civilian. You know, and, <laughs> and it takes him an hour and a half to eat. He's like a surgeon cutting off the, 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 the meat, you know, the, the fat off. I said, eat that. That's good. What are you throwing? You know, but that was my brother. He's still living. He's 
he'll outlive us all now, I guess, because he's been living that with all his life. Well, that's wonderful. And uh, uh, so then you came to Cincinnati uh, yeah. shortly after the big and crash. The crash. And then of, we came uh, here to October. July 30. Yeah. October and it 19, was, uh, October 29. Yeah. It was July. See, we, we had a house. We had to sell mm -hmm. it. And we, we were still going to school and everything. Where did so, you go to school here? Yeah, so before, at first I went to uh, a little school, right, by, see, we, we lived on Main Street, but way up by, by Mulberry, Mulberry and mm. Main. That's oh, yes. as far as you can get. Sure, you know, going up stops, the hill. It stops right there. Or Sycamore Hill. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so uh, I went to school there, I forget, Peasley. Oh, yes, Peasley. yes. Peasley. I was in the third grade there, mm -hmm. and then, uh, then I went to all the sixth district school, and then finally Vine Street School for a while, and then Rashing School, and then Old Woodward. I went to Old, Old Woodward High, Woodward. down yeah. way downtown. Yeah. yeah, I only, I, I, I was over at, I spent one year there, and then the second year, in the tenth grade, I, I think I must have went three months in the tenth grade or four months. That grade, and I quit, and I went to three C's. Oh yeah! In those days, I, I was in Oregon. Now, for people who don't know what the three C's are, that was the Civilian, Conservation, Civilian Conservation Corps, which was a very, very interesting and very innovative program very good. by FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, to employ young men uh, who were having a hard time during the Depression, and uh, the idea was to improve our country. They built roads and, and trimmed forests and all did, that sort of did, wonderful thing. We did thing. good work for them. It was a wonderful, wonderful program. Yeah. And uh, I know I had uh, I had several, several friends that were in that. Um, well then, uh, after, uh, after high school, um, or how long were you in the CCC? Well, just six months. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, it wasn't long, and after that, uh, I went to the CMTC for for I was going to be an officer in the infantry, mm -hmm. you know. And so, mm -hmm. but I only went one year. You're supposed to go four years, right, to get to be an infantry uh, lieutenant. So somebody said, "Let's go to the Navy or something." At that time, and it sounded like a good idea, and I went. Now this was this was 1941. 41. Before the war Before Pearl Harbor. Yes, I was okay. in, I went in in October, nineteen forty one. Okay. So so then I was at boot camp when the war started. Yeah. Yeah. We was I was just I was gonna put on my uh, go home on leave. I was supposed to get a, a week leave, and I was gonna put on my cute little sailor suit, mm -hmm. you know, and see if I could convert some virgins or something, <laughs> you know, because I had aspirations of grandeur in those days. Were you just up at Great Lakes? Yes. Yes, uh, and then but, so I didn't get a leave, and and I got aboard ship, I got aboard the USS Henderson, uh, in uh, it was in Mare Island. What kind of a ship was she? AP one, a very auxiliary passenger ship number one. The Shawmont was two. Oh yeah. Admiral King, when he went, when he was a lieutenant, he took the Henderson to China to take over the destroyer there. Oh yes. You know run to the ground and everything while he was because he was drunk or something and of course he expunged it from the records. That was Admiral King. Uh -huh. he, he got to be he didn't drink at all. Not he didn't take one drink after the war started. Isn't that uh, something? Yeah, he was a good man. Ernie King was a very, very right. impressive fellow, very yeah. very proud and he very was, well he was, he was a he was a, a real good man. He was a real gentleman. He certainly yeah. was. Well on the Henderson, uh, you went to sea on the Henderson? Yes, uh, we, we, we left uh, uh, J uh, December the 18th, and it took us 10 days to get to Pearl Harbor. We had the lumber lady with us. We had about, uh, oh, I'd say about 12 ships with us. Uh -huh. But the lumber lady was one of them, and we were zigzagging. We had the heavy cruiser Portland and light yeah. cruiser Raleigh with us, mm -hmm. plus four destroyers. In wow. Our, and my captain, uh, uh, right now, I got to think of his name. Beautiful man. This guy was. Uh, uh, I can't even think of his name right now because mm -hmm. it's you know, uh, and a wonderful guy. He was a 
SOPA, he was senior officer, president of float, so he's like the Commodore. Yeah, absolutely. And he was over the, the cruisers and everything, see, because right. he had, I think he had been passed over a couple of times, Captain Martin, mm -hmm. his name. And he'd been passed over a couple of times and ready, ready to kick him out when the war started. Right. And then they, and a month later, they made him a rear admiral. He got to be admiral, filled up in Navy Yard. Oh my so, goodness! As we were, uh, well, you had you had some very very interesting uh, senior commanders there, I should say. Yeah. Uh, so when you went uh, when you went aboard the Anderson, uh, were you just a striker or well, had? I was, see, I was a, a seaman first. Apprentice, apprentice seaman. I was still apprentice seaman. Oh, yeah. apprentice seaman. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Still apprentice seaman. Then I got after so long, I got to be a seaman second class. And I thought I was going to die as a second class seaman. Because uh, by that time, I, the, the Captain Martin left. We had a commander by the name of Roberts, and somehow we didn't get along together. Every time he saw, saw me, the hair would go out the back of his neck like, like that, like a dog. You know, I, I said him, uh, we didn't get along too good. One time, he, I got to tell you, he sent me to the brig one time. I, I, I knocked one of his. But he's, he, 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 he liked to play bridge, and this guy was a bridge player, and he would uh, he give me a bunch of bull crap, so I knocked him on his butt, and, and boy, the captain chewed me out and everything, and so bad. Now, I thought my dad could chew you out. I, I'd rather have a beating any time mm -hmm. than, a, than, a, than getting chewed Be out. Up and so dad. anyway, this, this captain chewed me out so much, I went down below, they took me to sick bay, they put a thermometer in my mouth. I had a hundred two temperature. There was nothing wrong with me. I just said, You oh, just <laughs> God. I was, understand perfectly. So, so I spent three days in sick bay and then I had to spend five days of bread and water afterwards. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> Well <laughs> you know, those those were you know, we can uh, we can call them character building right. experiences. Absolutely. <laughs> I got a lot of character building. <laughs> How long were you on the Henderson? Uh, Twenty-two months. All almost, two, we, they, almost two years. They, uh, yeah, they decommissioned it uh -huh. and they made the hospital uh, hospital ship out. The relief. Oh, the relief. They, sure. They, the relief was oh. exact. We were sister ships. Yeah. The Henderson and relief were sister ships. I see. And uh, the relief, uh, by the way, had the, had the largest guns in the navy. Uh, did you know that? You didn't know it. They you mean 16-inch rifles? No, no, no. They had 20-inch. Your 20-inch. Yes, they, these coastal coastal battery. They oh. they put them down so so that the the ballast for it. Oh, the the ship, I they, see. And uh, they put them in there. They, they you couldn't fire them. It just, oh no. It just was ballast and everything. So oh, isn't that, that was a, unusual. This one of the big oh. questions in the Navy. Oh, sure. Which ship has the biggest guns? Here the. Hospital ship. Relief. I wonder what I wonder what ship they came off of. No, it didn't come off the ship. It was coastal. Oh, they were coastal. coastal. That's coastal. what I said. Yeah. Well, yeah, that coastal artillery. Yeah, that was, naval artillery. Had, was, it was bigger. Oh they my had, goodness. These were like twenty inch instead of sure. Even bigger than sixteen inch. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of people, George, don't realize that uh, before Pearl Harbor, we had these coastal batteries. Batteries. Near all this. around, all around the uh, the seas of our country, uh, Atlantic, Pacific, and uh, and the Gulf of Mexico, and of course they were to repel invaders. But the problem with that was that they were they were fixed, They're, and you know they couldn't move them around like well, they like they did on a battleship. The, they could protect so much of the ocean. Uh, yeah. So they were they were easily surpassed uh, and ruled out uh, shortly after the war started. Well then, so after 22 months, uh, and and you went to Asia in the on the Henderson? No, 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 no I didn't. I, I went to because uh, I got on it was wartime then. So yeah, I know. So no, we we was in I was in. Uh, well, we went to Australia, to New Zealand, South Pacific. I was in, I was in uh, Auckland, New Zealand, and I was in the the, the, the capital of New Zealand. Yes. And, you know, when we picked up some. Troops there took them to Guadalcanal, and, mm -hmm. and I can't think of the name of the town right at the southern end of the North Island. Wellington. Yeah, the, Wellington. It was yeah. Wellington. I couldn't think of the name, and I never saw a building or nothing. It's just an old rickety wharf, and the Marines come over a hill, and 
and got on, on our boat. We took it out to sea where we was anchored out and picked up, uh, but we picked up some uh, big trucks and everything in Auckland. In oh, areas. yes. And uh, so we went to Fiji or something. We, and they never got off the ship. They uh -huh. had some kind of practice run, and then, then we went to Guadalcanal. Yeah. But we didn't go to Guadalcanal. We was at Tulagi. We oh, yes, sure. Tulagi. This is in the Solomon yeah, Islands. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Well, that, you know, and that was an interesting thing, too, because just in 1942, just before Guadalcanal, we had this, this, uh, these trial runs, as you say, yeah. in Fiji. Right. We were practicing yeah. landings it and so forth. It was horrible. It was a, it's a big, and I'm not going to use the name. I know. Uh, it's a, a big, big uh, to-do. It didn't do nothing. I know. They made a lot of mistakes. Absolutely. Some men were killed. It was a terrible situation. It was a horrible situation. Deal. Just, nothing, We didn't launch a ship or boat, nothing. We didn't. Like, yeah. We just was there. Yeah. Right. Well, that, uh, so when when did you get your first uh, Chevron, third class oh. boats? Well, uh, that people don't realize that yeah, this, was, uh, this man performed uh, the absolutely basic Navy work aboard a ship. Yeah. Called a boatswain's mate, well, and uh, and we nicknamed them. We called them boats. Yep, it was a the first one. I I, I had a captain who was anti George Petro. <laughs> oh, I had dear. two two. I had two officers. I had a, a lieutenant, and he was a sweet Olson. He got to be. He was my division officer for just a, a month or so, and they took him off. And he was a merchant marine captain. Oh my goodness! And he he, he, he got to be a full uh, a lieutenant, a mm -hmm. lieutenant. He come in the navy, and he didn't like the navy at all because nope. we had too much and we were spoiled and this and that. And and I was like a father confessor to him. I don't know why. Here <laughs> I am, nineteen years old. You know, <laughs> in trouble. You know, I must have reminded him of him you know, when he was a young sure. like me. You sure. see, but he took to me and he liked me and. And then I had another friend who was a chief warrant boatswain. Mm -hmm. He liked to drink a little bit. One day I saw him coming aboard. He had two heavy suitcases to get off the cab. And I ran down. I picked up them suitcases. And <laughs> Lord, I thought my arms were going to come out of the sockets. And them things were loaded. I carried him up to his room. He says, you want to drink, son? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and I don't drink straight whiskey, but I took a shot anyway. <laughs> he, he was bringing... He was bringing some joy juice oh, aboard. Yes, huh? so he was a nice man, and, and he he liked me. So I got I had two friends, and I got in trouble ashore and everything. And right, I, but they, they he came and got Almost me out of a break. Well, he came and got me out of a break at the, uh, in the <laughs> I don't know what the heck I was. That was a marine break. Well, those those days were yeah. were uh, as we look back on them now, hard to believe what we did and how we got through them and how we survived and uh, uh, so then after the Henderson what was your then, then I then I went aboard the Hornet yeah they I was on Hornet detail so uh, we're talking about the big carrier yeah, Hornet which yeah. is of the Essex, was, Essex class yeah I went to, to sea with, on the old Wyoming battleship Wyoming at oh, Chesapeake yeah. Bay with the, with our 40 millimeters right. we had excellent excellent trainers there for there was the Top-notch people that right. were teaching us how to fire the weapons. And yeah, the old Wyoming. She was a World War One battle. Ship. Right, right. Yeah, had uh, about twelve-inch guns on her or something. You know, that's uh, out the Chesapeake Bay. It probably fired more ammunition than any ship in the Navy. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> Repel the invaders. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that's very interesting. Uh, the from. Uh, from that point on, uh, aboard the Hornet, which was CV-12, yeah. which stands for Carrier Vessel Number 12, uh, the first Hornet, which was a very famous ship that we we're all aware of, was uh, CV-7. CV-8. Uh, CV-8. I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting me. And she was the ship that carried uh, the B-25 bombers. Uh, the Doolittle Raiders, who on April 18th, 1942, flew over 30 seconds over Tokyo. And the, the, the second ship that bombed Japan 
was the CV-12 USS Hornet. How about that? We put the next bombs on that island. Isn't that something? And that's all that time went by. Sure. Now, on, on the Hornet, uh, what kind of airplanes did you have in the squadron? F-6Fs, uh, SB-2Cs, and, mm -hmm. and your uh, torpedo bombers. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the yeah. F-6F, of course, is a yeah, that's fantastic we, fighter was, plane. That's all we had. We never did get any Corsairs or anything. We right, had, right. Although we had some land on us and take yes. off and stuff like that. Well, they, they saved the Corsairs for the Marines. Yeah. Mostly. Well, it was uh, it was a better ship, a better flyer, actually, than the, than the F-6F. But it was hard to land on. Oh, it was, it was a very difficult. Yeah, because of the high front end of it. Oh, you know? yeah. When that, I remember the Corsairs because when, yeah. when they were on their on yeah. their landing gear, they're, sitting they're, on they're the, sitting either on the, you're looking up the sky. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't see up. The pilot would have to try and crane around that monstrous, monstrous yeah. engine with the huge, huge, huge propeller. Yeah. Well, uh, and of course the TBMs or the yeah. TBFs yeah. were yeah. the torpedo bombers built yeah. by That's Roman. all we had. And the SB-2C was a uh, was a dive bomber. It wasn't too good of a ship at that plane at that time. It, it, its engines were sort of underpowered. Yes. But it was one heck of a good dive bomber. Oh, it was, it was excellent, good. excellent. You're right. I, I remember a story told by, by an officer that flew one. His name was Rand Ransom, and he was on uh, in, in, uh, VF2. Mm -hmm. And we got to be friends, and he, he used squad. to come up to my gun crew because I was on the after end of the island. There was twin five inch, two twin five inch, and then there was my 40. Then I was on top of the director. In the director, I was a spotter. And uh, so I was a senior guy on the ship on, on, the, on the gun crew. Later on, we got a first class. Mm -hmm. well, we had a first class, but then we got rid of him, got another guy. He was a coxswain, I was second class. And uh, so I, I was the boss, you know, the right. gun crew. So. Right. And what I did, during the war, I guess, uh, I, like I said, I fueled every ship. Uh, we took on fuel, we, we was at sea, I took on fuel, mm -hmm. and then uh, we topped off all the destroyers and stuff yes. like that. So, uh, and all the time, that we, I, was, I was there for every one of them, not one of my men even got a sprained finger, and then we was working in a horrible, horrible place. You had a little, small, tight room, oh, you know, no. compartment. Right. And, uh, so, exactly. so I'm, I'm glad that everything worked out. Well, I should say, well, I think uh, obviously you were you were a very effective leader, and uh, you 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 had the knowledge and and, uh, and the will to see that things were done correctly. And I'm sure the men under you uh, appreciated your leadership very much. Um, of course, the Hornet uh, ranged uh, throughout the Western and South Pacific and uh, very, very effective uh, against the Japanese Empire. What was the first uh, battle uh, situation? We went, we went to... Uh, to Lodi? No, 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 no. First, first was on, on the Hornet. Yes. It, it was, uh, oh, we had, a, we had a big battle there later on. We put troops ashore there. Palau. Oh, Palau. Uh, we sure. hit Palau, yeah, that was our first bombing raid all right because we got we got there and we we hit Palau and l later on it's Peleliu which is one of the islands mm -hmm. we landed on it and I think that's the only mistake that uh, uh, Admiral Mitchell did you know I mean only uh, uh, the Admiral in, in Washington in the Nimitz. Uh, Nimitz Nimitz that's the only mistake he did we it was a meat grinder yes we lost so many Marines. This was a that, terrible situation. It was a horrible. It's, we should have bypassed it. Yeah. And and put, that was you know of course I'm I'm I got backside you know I could well, see backwards. And historians are the same way, George. Yeah, and yeah, there are yeah. books and books written about this. Yeah, yeah, what a terrible mistake it was. Yeah. Uh, that that was a marine operation, and uh, and horrible. they had the they had the uh, the corsairs the fighter planes yeah. there, but. Uh, the Palau Islands, yeah. they were just, as you look at the map, for those who are listening to us here, you look on the map and, and you'll see the Philippine Islands here, and the Palaus were just, just right by nearby. Yeah. Yeah. 
Of course, nearby in the Pacific, yeah, it's still meant a thousand miles away. <laughs> the Pacific is yeah, so we, vast. Yeah. But Palau was a terrible place, I know. Yeah, Peleliu. It was Peleliu. Yeah, Peleliu and Angaur. Yeah, and, uh, it was so, it was almost, horrible. All I those weird places. But the Army had a thing like that, too. It's a, uh, the, the one force that they went to that, I, I can't think of the name of that battle, they had the Army. And they shouldn't have went there. They should have went through Cologne and bypassed it, you know. That's right. But they went through this uh, That's right. course. That it was a meat grinder there for people dying and dying and dying for nothing. Well, you know, uh, one of the things, uh, one of the things about the Pacific Campaign, uh, the action in Europe and in the ETO, as far as publicity and everything. Concerned, and you might say romance and yeah. all that. The ETO just outshone uh, what was going on in the Pacific. The 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 information and, and the knowledge of what was going on in that vast Pacific was not as well known for some strange reason. And uh, of course, we understand, you know. Uh, the Normandy landings on the 6th of June, 1944, uh, and then as the army marched uh, across France and into Germany, uh, it was uh, so captivating in people's minds. But in the meantime, all this, all this terrible stuff was going on out in, in the Pacific. And it was ships like you on the Hornet, you know, the CV-12, and the great, great things that, uh, that you accomplished. And uh, the Japanese were a fearsome animal. And, uh, and uh, determined uh, to, they were really dedicated to dying, you know. They, 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 were, they, were, they were one ter a heck of an enemy, I'll tell you They that. really were. And they really knew their defensive stuff. They were just experts. In oh, defense. yes. Well, they'd been there so long, you know. And they'd uh, developed those defenses and outposts uh, throughout the Pacific for many years before we, the war even started. And they were brainwashed to to die for their country and everything. So absolutely, they're... absolutely. Well then, um, carrying on, were you at uh, Iwo Jima? Yes. You were at Iwo Jima in February of 1944? Yeah. Yeah. 44. We, we had every 45, one of us. 45, I'm sorry. We was in all of that stuff to, to the end, up to the end. We That was our first thing, Palau. Then we hit uh, uh, New Guinea. No, we hit the, New Guinea, uh, what was the name of the place where we, we had, that uh, was, was General De Mar uh, MacArthur's army. Hollandia? Uh, oh, uh, Hollandia, I couldn't think of the name. Yeah. And then we, after we had Hollandia, before we went back to uh, our atoll, Majuro, mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah, Majuro, we hit the truck. Yes. And, and that was uh, that was the second time we hit truck, but I was on the, the first time. First yeah, time. We, 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 the first day struck truck before before we got there, uh, the carriers. Well, the truck was uh, the truck was a tremendous fortress. And, uh, it was just like Pearl Harbor is yeah, to, to us. Right, and it's T R U K, not yeah. T R U C K. Yeah. <laughs> and you know the the uh, <coughs> irony of that and place other places in the Pacific, such as Truck, uh, the Japanese had taken them over. Uh, before the war, uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of people don't realize that Japan was one of our allies in World War I. And at the end of World War I, uh, Germany, who had possessions throughout the Pacific, lost. Uh, lost those to Japan. And Japan started building them up even 20 years before World War II started. People don't realize that. And places like uh, Pruk, as they pronounced it, uh, were, were, were tremendous for, uh, fortresses. Uh, they had uh, concrete revetments there. And then that's what we found out <coughs> when we got to uh, places like Iwo Jima in uh, 1945. Well, that, was, that was another beat grinder, but we, we needed to have that, I think. We had to have needed it. I think that was necessary. It was a, a, a killing zone for us, but it was... Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, it certainly... Uh, it certainly was important, as you point out, it, George. They needed it. We needed it for for our fighter aircraft later on, so they yes. could follow us. And B fifty one said could go all the way 
to, all the way to, to Tokyo, to Tokyo and, so and back with with our B-29. That's right. That's very true. So after uh, uh, you were on the Hornet up till the end of the war, all the way. Yeah, I, I brought it back to the states. I was on it after this, the war was over. All you know, that. I stayed over a couple of months before I got my leave because I see. As I was going to go to shore duty, you know, because uh -huh. I had like forty-two months at sea during the war. The war was only forty-five months, so well, I had forty-two I months. Good heavens. Uh, uh, Oh my goodness! That yeah, that was a that was a long, long time. I should say. Well, you were a salty guy. I'll tell you that. Yeah, you were you were a shell back and yeah, all that sort of thing, the, yeah. crossing the crossing the equator, the equator and, got your, and, and your dragon back for the other the, the 180th <laughs> Meridian. Yes, yeah. right. Crossing international dateline. I'm sure you did that many times. Well, after the uh, after the Hornet and. Uh, the end of the war was the Hornet. The Hornet did not go to Tokyo Harbor no, for the surrender. No, 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 we were in the states. Yeah, yeah we were in the states. We was in Alameda. You know. Alameda Naval Air Station. Right. On San Francisco Bay. Right. Where yeah. it's at now. Pardon? The, the ship is there now. Is, is a historic. That's ship. right. She right. is. I, I I give them a hundred dollars every year. Good for you. For, for the maintenance of that ship. Yeah. Well, that's uh, she is a true. Uh, oh, I love uh, American I love, icon. I love her. Yeah, yeah I love that ship. I can imagine yeah. so. Well, that Essex class of carrier was just was a was a beautiful, beautiful designed vessel, and huge. And uh, I know I I sailed with a number of them. I wasn't aboard them, but I was in the in the vicinity of a number of them throughout the war. Uh, so after the. Uh, you were ashore at Alameda for, just, uh, uh, yeah, I went short time. Yeah, short time after I got my leave, I came back to Alameda, and I was with, with that uh, uh, outfit, you know, the carrier carrier the aircraft aircraft service, service unit. unit. Yeah, I was in that, but I only stayed like two weeks. Okay, and, and the, the the boys there that were stationed there, they were married and everything. I was single, and I was broke, and I didn't want to stay looking at that city. <laughs> over there, but it's so much fun, and me broke over here, yeah. so I decided I better go to sea because I'd go nuts. I think if they, I stayed, and Alameda was fine. I never the food was like fresh food and everything, and I and I was in charge of two guys that would sweep in front of the hangars, and I wouldn't let them touch this bush that said Kazu Six on it. You know, uh -huh. I fit that myself. I <laughs> See, I wouldn't let those two enlisted men. <laughs> well, that uh, of course the CASU yeah, Carrier, Carrier Aircraft, Aircraft Service Unit. Unit for those yeah. who don't know yeah, that, what it is, were the men who worked on the planes, maintained them. Yeah. And when the, they were damaged, you you fixed them up. Well, and, no, and also see, we we delivered them yes. just to, to where we're supposed to. We took. They all came there, and from there they, they went aboard ships and stuff, and take it to where they could go to action. Well, Absolutely. Actually, so that's what it was mostly. Well, one of the uh, one of the men in our Hornet group, a fellow by the name of John John Steele, who I brought to the Hornet group uh, last year, uh, flew TBMs, and he was he was a ferry pilot, and uh, where a, where a carrier needed a replacement plane, uh, if he was available, he flew the plane there, you know, and then he was taken off and, and brought back and. So you had uh, contact with all those kinds of people. Well, I did. It was peacetime. Yeah, yeah it was so peacetime. And, and I, we didn't do, do too much. All I did was sweep <laughs> in front of this uh, place and cut the grass, and and then I I went into the. Uh, I, they they towed planes and everything, so I, I was tired of not doing anything. So I started splicing wire and everything, so that they can have they can put them on the wheels and tow. Throw these planes oh, yeah, around sure. and everything, so I could splice wire and oh, line and stuff like that. That was very inventive of you. Yeah, that wasn't that. inventive. I, I was goofing <laughs> off when we was in. Uh, we were getting our the, the flight deck fixed up at, uh -huh. at, at Hunter's Point. Right. And I had a. I had this uh, big, big uh, ladder, big, big uh, thing that we would get back aboard ship with, and, it, and so they had a paint on it and everything. So we had to scrape it and paint it and everything. So I brought it ashore and had it 
taken by a little picnic you know, thing and way out, about a block away from the ship so nobody could see us. And I had 20 guys working on it. I just had five, five of them working on it. You know, 15 of us goofing off. Mm -hmm. You know, so we could. And I was goofing off. I I go into this uh, uh, rigorous loft and I learned how to splice wire, oh, boy. And stuff like that, make mats and fenders yeah. and uh, hold. And those civilians there were sharp. Uh, they were experts. Right. So right. I learned from them. Did yeah. you learn? Uh, did you learn parachute rigging? No, 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 no not nothing that. like that. No, right. no, nothing like that. Right. So then you got, uh, as you say, <laughs> you'd rather go to sea than uh, yeah, than be uh, stuck uh, looking at the lights, the shore, looking at the bright lights across the bay, and yeah. not being able to take advantage of it. So, so how did how did you get hooked up with the Catashan Bay? Well, that's when I they they put me aboard, and I'll never forget that. I met this division, my division officer. They they knew that I knew I was going to be a division boatswain's mate because I was senior, and. Uh, so I said, how did you do, sir? And then I threw up my hand. Well, he, 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 you'd think I had leprosy or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah. He, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you know, but he, he did, he did, you know, yeah. reluctantly. And I said, boy, I'm in for it now. Yeah. And we did, but had, I had 60 men in the division, 40 of them were on report, mostly for little little crimes, you know, like sitting on the report job. Report means in trouble. Yeah, it was sitting on the Call it, you know, with while well, during working hours and everything, you know, yeah. and uh, not being at their cleaning stations and stuff like that. But this one good sailor, he stole a boat, went to the Mare Island, got, <laughs> got some booze, and was bringing it back, got caught. Oh, and, I, and I had two seamen on other the seamen. The rest of them were all, you know, compartment cleaners. Sure. And he was one of my seamen. And uh, so I didn't get along good with this. My, my division officer and finally I had to go to the captain's mess and I went with, with my one of the, my boys I had to go whenever somebody went to the captain's mess so I went there and the captain they read the charges and specifications against this this guy and they had him boy you know he was he and was cold. dead yeah and uh, <laughs> the captain said boats he said what do you think I said well the captain I says I cannot get rid of this guy for one day. Mm -hmm. I have to have him. I've got two seamen, and he's one of them. Mm -hmm. And I need him. They said, okay, he's right, they're going to arrest him. said, go back there and be a good boy. Right. And, and that made this, this division officer mad, but he couldn't do nothing about it. Oh, that, that, that. Captain Overlord. Yeah. Well, that, but see, at that time already, we went to sea, and we went to Upper Harbor, and he says more to a boy. The mm -hmm. captain did that. He was a fly boy. Mm -hmm. He was the commander. And uh, so I wore to the boy and, and I put the, the whole anchor chain through through the boy and come back on mm -hmm. deck with the deck stopper. And he looked at that and he said, What's this? What's this? I said, More. I said, That's, we, were, we are more to count. He says, I want the shackle. I said, You didn't say shackle. You said shackle. We were shackled to the boy, you know. And you said more. So he went and got the second class boats and mate that was in second division brought him over and he looked at it he said oh captain it's perfect see he's got the bite was you know mm -hmm. it was just right and everything so uh, he, he he's kind of but that night at nine o'clock you know they got the message Catashan bay uh, proceed immediately to buckner bay okinawa, okinawa. Wait for further oh. orders and and he says, man, all special sea details. I was on the forecastle. I plugged in the earphones. I said, first division, special sea detail, man, and ready. He says, cast off. I said, aye, aye, sir. I hit the deck stopper. I said, we're away, Captain. Boy, he was, he got that. Out. <laughs> and every ship in the harbor was going, good luck, Godspeed to a smart right. ship. You know? <laughs> he had all the telegrams up. And he says, he wants to see me. I said, well. I'm putting the camera shackle together, you know, put this anchor back on. <laughs> so I don't, and I don't know how to do it. I never did do it before. And finally, after that seaman, that Morris, the guy that was drunk all the time, he uh, he put it together more than I did. He was more help to me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I went up there, and I, so the captain, then he uh, he said he was a fly boy and everything. But right now he went to school, he went to Annapolis with all these guys. 
around him. And they all said, good luck, Godspeed. He's reading the telegrams. So Isn't that wonderful? Know. Yeah. And so, boy, I, I was in like Flint. <laughs> you were in like what, Flint. Yeah, uh, I was let's say, that was a thing. That was a very familiar yeah. uh, saying, uh, in like Flint or out like trout. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just saw on the television last night advertising a new movie that's coming out the 20th of October entitled Flat Boys. And it's about, uh, it's about Iwo Jima. And, oh no, I'm sorry, it's not Flat Boys. It's Flags of Our Fathers, that's what it is which is a great book for those of you who don't know about it. It's about the Battle of Iwo Jima, and particularly about the men who raised the flag on Mount Suribachi, which is a great, great story. So this new movie, Flags of Our Fathers, is coming out the 20th of October, and it's supposed to be very good. Uh, we're, we're still talking with George Petro. Uh, you mentioned APRA, for those who don't know, where APRA is, it's on the island of Guam. Yeah. In the Marianas Islands, in the far western Apra Pacific. Harbor, yeah. And APRA Harbor, and APRA is the, is key, the key capital city, of key, Guam. Key city, yeah. Right. yeah. And we, we still, Guam is a, still it's a territory American, American of territory. the United States. Yeah. Did you go ashore there? No, never been ashore. Yeah. How about Buckner Bay? No, I didn't even go ashore there. I stayed more down. You know, some guys did, I didn't go ashore. Right, right. So we, uh, went, we left there. We went to Shanghai. Mm -hmm. and, and we picked the guys off the 20th Air Force that was oh, in China oh. and brought them out and uh, brought them back to the states. Oh, I'll bet you heard some stories out of that. Well, yeah, there was a, one of the guys was a guy by the name of Tony DeMarco, who was a welterweight champion of the world in 1947. Oh yeah, and yeah. he was uh, he uh, he was aboard. How so, about that? Yeah. Well, uh, of course, Okinawa was. Uh, it was a terrible, terrible battle, and uh, it was a it was a necessary battle, of course. We because she was yeah, we, Okinawa. We needed was a, that. We needed that. That was a base. To, to, now, from then, we we could attack. Yes. But that would have been a bloody thing going oh. into Japan. I'm so happy that we didn't have to make that. Well, that's a point we like to make, and that is yeah. that the atom bombs that were dropped on saved a lot of people. Uh, they led their lives too. Absolutely. Absolutely, Hiroshima and because Nagasaki. If we would have went in there at that time, they would have been. There well, would have. We would have had a million casualties. They would have had forty million. That's exactly right because yeah. they were still yeah. dedicated yeah. to uh, dying for the emperor, yeah. and it would have been a terrible, terrible, bloody thing. So I, I really feel that Truman, President Harry Truman, made the right uh, decision on that to drop those bombs. By this time, Franklin Delano Roosevelt had died, of course, and uh, Vice President Harry Truman became president. Well, do you have any uh, any other great uh, sea story to tell on your way back to the States well, or well, anything just, like that? Uh, did I tell you? I don't know. See, I, well, I lost my track, but I lied to track, but <laughs> did I tell you during that second typhoon what happened? Oh, no. Uh, well, I was in... I was I was at CIC. I stood my watches in the mm -hmm. Combat Intelligence Center at night. Right. You know, so uh, I was going on watch. It was, I think it was a four to eight watch. Could have been a twelve or four, but I'm leaning towards four to eight. Yeah, mm -hmm. My mind is that good. And uh, so here it is. I think this ship is going to break apart. Now we're in this huge typhoon. You know, we're in the trough where the the, the belly is. Uh, the ship is going down. Then we're sure. on the peak. You know, so you're this looking up. So the, yeah, and the then sea he, was up here over oh, your yeah, head. Yeah, and then anyway. We had dug down, and when we came up, we dog-eared up the flight deck. You see, 47 feet back at, you know, from the, the, and so, anyway, but I didn't know that was going on. But with that same night, I was walking up, and I was, you know, I was, my butt was doing this, you know, the puckering on, the, you know, on that, because I said, <laughs> man, I hope them guys at Newport News have built this ship. It, Knew what they're doing, because boy, you know, because I thought it sure would break, because it was hollering and screaming. The ship was. Oh yeah. yeah. And so I got up there, and I'm the only regular Navy man in this compartment. You know, mm -hmm. with CIC, there was a an officer there. He was a, 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 a flight captain. Yeah, he was in charge of the the, the thing, you know, and uh, he he was a, a fighter director officer. Yes. That's FDO. 
and he's in charge, and he's sitting, I'm sitting, sitting on a bench in front of his console, he's in front of the console, this big, big uh, thing, uh, circle or thing is plastic, and the guys are behind us so they can write and draw the, where the exactly. planes are coming in, they write backwards and left-handed. And so we're staying there, and everything's quiet. None of us are sick, you know, seasick, no. No, nobody. And, and But we're not feeling good either. <laughs> and we're sitting there, and here over our TBS, that talk between chips, which is just like an automobile radio that right. you had, you know, hello, so-and-so. And, and uh, he says, uh, oh, red skin, this is barbarian over. Redskin was our admiral. Now, if you want to talk to the ship, you say ginger. We was ginger, you mm -hmm. know. And Barbarian was a heavy cruiser of Pittsburgh. And the fighter director officer turned the seat around and clicked the, 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 the thing. And he says, go ahead, Barbarian. This is Redskin, which is admiral. He says, our bow is off for port quarter. Silence. So I ran around. And I keyed the mic myself. Barbarian, I said, this is red skin, repeat. Well, now he got testy. I said <laughs> that our bow is off our port quarter. <laughs> so I said, somebody better get the admiral. So there's always, there's, there's uh, two radar guys on each radar, mm -hmm. you see. It. They only work 15 minutes at a time because, you know, their eyes and everything in the dark room. So there's always loose people. So one guy went and got him, and here they come to the admiral. Admiral John Clark, oh, he's a wonderful man. Jocko. Jocko. Jocko came in and he went right to the, the TV, you know, the, the mic, and he keyed it. He says, Barbarian, he says, this is Redskin. He says, you have any casualties? All hands present account for a circle. He says, what are you doing? He says, we're backing in the wind. He says, very well. And that was it. That was the conversation. How about and the next day we found out there's 127 feet of the Pittsburgh broke off right up all the way to the eight inch armor. Mm -hmm. And it was floating yet. They picked it up. It, they took it and towed it to Admiral Harbor, you know, mm -hmm. themselves. I would see it one time. But uh, man, I was there when that happened. Then I said then I found out that our flight thing had been dog here. And that was broken off by the storm, the violence. Yeah, we, we went down yeah. underneath the water when we came up and just there was just tons and tons off. and tons of weight on that. But you the know, Hornet was okay. Oh yeah. We, boy, they, uh, thank <laughs> God for those guys that, that built that ship. Yes, boy, I'll sir. Tell you, I was, I was, uh, that, I, I was a little tight there, you know. Well, I should say, and, and uh, so many people don't realize that uh, not only in the Navy were you up against the enemy, but forces of nature, but the, but the sea was your enemy as well. Oh boy, it could and, be horrible. Uh, yeah, yeah, I should say. Well, we're 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 talking with George Petro about. His great, uh, great experiences and his great contribution to our nation during World War II, and uh, for men such as George, uh, we're, we're eternally grateful and thankful for your service, and uh, we hope that uh, that you live a, a much longer life. Thank you. And uh, I think it's just been wonderful, George. Yeah. And I didn't realize. Uh, we've had breakfast together for uh, the first Friday of the month for, for many months, yeah. and I, we've just never had the opportunity to talk like this before, yeah. because you know, we get 30 guys in that room, as Lee knows, yeah. and everybody's yakking away, you know, yeah. and it's hard to get focused in on somebody, and this opportunity for me is a great honor, George, and I thank you. I never you. spoke to you before, you know. I, I know, we've never had, hello, you know, and then we see, uh, see each other at the Navy yeah. League meetings yeah. as well. Yeah. So uh, we, uh, you're, you're still a member of the Hornet Association? Yes, yes. And did you have a Catachan Bay Association? No, 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 I didn't, I never went, I, I never even knew if they ever had a, yeah. Meeting, you know, right. or, or the other. I was, I was on the Catachan Bay and, and on the uh, uh, another one. I was just, mm -hmm. Which one was that? I can't remember. Uh, so you've been aboard the Hornet out at uh, Alameda, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. For yeah. a reunion well, just, or just, something? No, I've never been there. Uh, I, I've been to two reunions, one in uh, Pennsylvania, which uh, one we went, went aboard the, the New Jersey. Oh, yes. And, and, uh, well, and then I went down to Mobile Bay, and I was up on the Alabama. Oh, yes. two, I was with, there with uh, uh, 
Lee Hightower, we went to Mobile to get right. him. Yeah, right. he, he and I went after that. Well, that... Uh, and that's the only two reunions I went. I could afford it and everything. We had one in uh, San Diego, but my health is that good. I'm completely, I'm not completely blind. I have uh, just peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, so I'm living in a place where the blind people live. So nice Cincinnati, of Cincinnati, Samuel Bell, home for the sightless. That's where I'm staying now. Oh, you are. I, oh. That's, that's, uh, I had to sell my house and everything. Well, I hope that that's good. I couldn't cook no more. I hope it's a good place for you. Yeah, my wife died eight years ago. Oh, so I'm sorry. 47 years. 47 yeah. years. How about that? And she passed away. Yeah. That's well, eight years ago. Now, now, do you have children? Just one daughter. Okay. One She's daughter. here in town? Yes, yeah, she lives in town. That's she has wonderful. three children. And and uh, I have one. I have two great-grandsons. Mm -hmm. Now, they're just, one's two years old, the other's eight months. Oh, wow. So... Well, that's a very, very wonderful thing. Yeah. Well, again, we've, we've had the honor and the pleasure of speaking with George Petro of the United States Navy in 1942 to 1946. And, and uh, God bless you, George. Thank you. And we'll, uh, we'll keep flying, as we say. Oh, yeah. Keep them flying. And keep I, going to the meetings. Absolutely. And I thank, thank you for joining us here. And... Uh, so that we're able to record history that now will not be lost. And you know, that's something else. And something about our group too, as, as Lee knows, some of the fellows are reluctant um, to be interviewed, I should say, to be interviewed. And I say, look, if you die without being interviewed, you're gonna take all that history with you. Yeah. And George has been wonderful and cooperative too help us record that. We thank you very much. Hello, my name is Ray Hughes and I'm the interviewer for the Veterans History Project conducted by the Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library and the National Archives in Washington, D.C. And today is the eighth day of June 2016 and we have the honor and privilege of interviewing George Petro veteran of World War II, veteran of, on the Henderson and the USS Hornet. Um, and it's a pleasure to, to have you here today, George. It's an uh, honor to be here with you. Uh, if we would, we'll start with uh, uh, your date of birth and where you, and the, where, your address where you were when you were born. Well, I was born in Canton, Ohio in 1923. Uh, uh, what so, was the month and day, George? Uh, January 31st, 1923. Uh-huh. Uh, that's, uh, have Greek parentage, my mom and dad. What we, uh, your Greek heritage then, your father's name was? Uh, Anastas Petro. And, uh, and your mother's name? Uh, her, uh, her name was uh, uh, Sultana Georgiou. And what was her last name? Huh? Georgiou. Georgiou. Yeah, just, you know, see, they named me after uh, my grandmother's name. Her last name was Georgiou. Her first name was Panayotza, so my youngest brother's name's Pete Panayoti, you know. Yeah, I see. So that's a, uh, and did you have any uh, other brothers and sisters? I had an older brother and an older sister. And their names? Uh, uh, Charles was my oldest brother. Uh, and but Mary was the oldest of the, all of us. When she went to school in Canton, Ohio, uh, she was born in Norwood, but she, when she started school, it was in Canton. My dad was a, uh, what, extra, extra man. Uh, uh, he did odd jobs there for the steel mill. He was a, just a laborer, he was uh -huh. a laborer and uh, in the Timken Roller Bearing Company. And we lived about a block away from it. So we lived close to the thing. He'd go to work and come back and stuff like that. So, And I remember there was a couple of Greek coffee houses in Canton, Ohio, and they sold whiskey. And you, know, you weren't supposed to sell whiskey at that time, you know. But they was, that's, and they even smoked those Turkish water pipes there. They even had them at that, 
that place because uh, they, these people, most of them spoke Turkish more than they spoke Greek. I see. Um, you say um, they mostly spoke uh, Turkish. In, um, in from on that street there, that that's that was uh, uh, what was the name of the street? See, uh, uh, a year ago, the Carnahan Avenue Carnahan. in South Canton, Ohio. I see. Um, then, did your um, grandparents come from Turkey? What was it? Yes, um, yes, yes. They, my 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 people really come way way back in history. Before the Ottoman Empire took over Turkey, uh, my my people uh, was in uh, Israel, and, and when when uh, uh, the, before the, the the King David was uh, the the uh, king of the world at that time, before Solomon's time, that's when my people moved to Turkey. The, you know my ancient ancestors. So, so I my history goes way back I to see. then, uh, that before Solomon's time. So, uh, when, and what were your grandparents' names? Uh, there was uh, my Georgiou was uh, was my my mother's name, and, and Petro was my father's name. Grandfather. An Anastas Petro. Anastas Petro. What does Anastas mean? It means he is risen uh, I see. in Greek. This is just a, a member. There's a there's a queen of uh, Russia, Anastasia. Right. You know Anastasia. Right. right. You know, well uh, she was a Greek Orthodox uh, uh, Russian Orthodox Church. You know. I so see. it's a religious name, like you know. I see. He is you know, and my dad's name is Anastas, which is means he is risen, you okay. know, that's, uh, they, they are very uh, church-like, whatever it is. They well, now, so your grandparents and your father, yeah. they were living in Turkey. Yes. And this yeah. is World War I, isn't it? This is World War I, and they got kicked out of Turkey then, see, and they, uh, they took over, even that they had, Ayatriada was the most beautiful building, that was a church. The Holy Trinity Church, that this was built hundreds of years ago, and still I imagine it's still stand. It probably it's a mosque now in Turkey. Yeah, it's in what the heck's the name of the town? Uh, I can't remember the name. See, uh, uh, big big name town. Uh, the 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 Turks kicked all the Greeks out of there, they, but they killed a lot of Armenians. Uh, a whole a bunch of them, poor guys. They uh, and they Turks themselves didn't do it. They had the uh, uh, Kurds to do it. The Kurdish people that was working there, you know, they 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 was in the Turkish army, and they would point to a house and say, "Non-believers live in that house," and so that give them open thing. They went in, killed the people there and took the furniture out and sold it because they didn't get no pay. This way here they can buy whiskey and everything else, you know, to, to drink, the, the Kurds. So they was, that's the way it was in those days. But so they didn't kill that too many Greeks. They killed a lot of Armenians for some reason or other. The Turks did at that time. But before, this is during World War I, yeah. They took your grandparents' property and everything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, right now I could go back and they'd give me some money for that if, if I went back there for it, but I'm not going to go back to it. So what did your grandparents do at preparing to get out of Turkey then? Oh, they, well, uh, my dad, they they put him in the Turkish army and he was in the uh, cavalry and because uh, they said, you're you're a Turk, you're going you're gonna to fight for and were they're fighting Greece. My dad didn't want to fight Greece. He was a Greek himself, you know. So and these were uh, the Ottomans, and and so he uh, he went AWOL, and uh, went. And I tell the story about it. He was <laughs> walking walking his horse, and he seen a, a Greek officer 
was one coming down the path. The Greek officer seen him, seen him on a horse, knew it was a Turkish soldier, you know, and uh, it was, he didn't worry about it. He, he just walked up, and my father said to him, Hail, fellow countrymen, in, in Greek. My, my dad didn't speak Greek at all. He, he, it's all, that's about all the Greek he knew, you know. The kind of patrioti, hail fellow countrymen, you know. And uh, so uh, he said hail back to him. He says, he says, uh, he says, you're, you're Greek. He says, yes, I don't speak Greek. I'm, you know, I speak Turkish. He, and he understood Turkish too, this guy, this officer. And he says, follow my path and they're eating now. You'll you'll see them. They'll be about. He says, "Won't they shoot me?" He says, "No." He says, "They won't shoot you. Go ahead, just walk your horse in there." You know. So he walked in, and everybody said, "Hey, Anastas, Anastas." There was some Greeks already there from his town. You know, that seen him. And uh -huh. So right away he was okay. So he, but uh, that's the way he got out of the T Turkish army and uh, got to meet the Greeks there and everything and they, he went from there to Perez and from Perez he wrote letters back to them you know to, to, uh, to his family but he got married to my mother she was 14 grandmother yep no my mother my, my mother my, my dad married my mother she was 14 and he was 24 and um, he went to, he went to. But we were talking about your grandfather on oh, the horse, he, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, I don't know how old he was, but he got killed uh, at, on the beach. What happened, my mother had a calf. Your grandmother had a calf? No, my oh, mother. Oh, your mother. My mother had this calf, and she was going to take it to Greece, because they were supposed to leave the country. And uh, this Turkish soldier said, that's a Greek calf, you can't have it. And my mother says, oh, this, uh, uh, this is my pet. Wherever I go, this calf follows. She, she was lying to him, you know, but she wanted to, that, that calf's going to grow up and give you milk. Right. See, that's what uh, she was thinking of. And he says, this is a Turkish calf. And he took it, away, just pulled it away from her. When he did that, my grandfather, who had an American gun on him, he, they didn't know, he pulled it out and shot and killed this guy with one shot in the head. But immediately they cut his head off. I mean, it rolled on the, on the ground, wow. right on the beach there. Uh, so that's, that's the way my grandfather died. My, my grandmother was there, she seen it, you know, the, and my, my mother was 14. <clears throat> already married to my my dad. See, they got married because he knew he's gonna have to leave, and he told the, he told the, my mother's uh, father that he wanted to marry her. And he says, "You you can marry her." So they got married right there and then. They they went to the priest and he he married him. But uh, yeah. Now, what did how, how did your uh, grandmother take any money or anything? How did she had she had a lot of gold, and she had she put on, I uh, like fifteen sixteen petticoats, and she sewed gold in them. We were probably the richest people. I mean, my my grandma and grandpa was the richest people in that town, and it was called. Let me see if I can remember the name uh, of this place. See, see, a, a year ago, everything would be still good, but uh, it, it had a name, and I right now I can't think of the name of the village where they came from. This is about from Brusa. Uh, Brusa is not; it's in inland, just a little bit, and it's a big town in Turkey. It's about 20 miles from there, or 25 miles, or whatever. And it's to to the uh, uh, east and uh, east. Uh, no, it's w west, 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 uh, a little west from Brusa, about 20, 25 miles, and uh, it's 
uh, I can't think of the name of the town. Uh, it's, it's, it's an area, it's not even a town. But, but they had a Greek church there mm -hmm. and everything. And because uh, I know my dad told the story that when he was 14, he took the horse out and put, put it on the wagon and everything. And he went about 20 miles, 25 miles away from the village where they was living and went to a woods and filled it up full of wood and brought it back to this priest where the priest lived and unloaded the whole thing and every one of them was the same thing so you could put in your uh, stove to cook with you could you cook with wood there that's they didn't have gas and electricity or nothing like that so uh, you cook with wood and that's what they used and he, he went and got that set it up for the priest and the priest didn't come out so my dad knocked on the door and he told the priest he says I've, I've got some wood for you and I, I stacked it all up oh my son and he made a cross he says thank you and my dad smelled he says what is it that I'm smelling he says he says my meal he says I'm eating it I said, you know he says that's meat he says today's Friday oh the priest Give a, made a cross. So I'll have to eat it, he says, because uh, you know it'd be a sin to throw it away. The food that I already cooked. And my dad said yes. And when he got to his house, his mother brought out some cheese and and uh, 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 olives and stuff like. He says, take that crap away. He says, and I want some meat. She says, today's Friday. He says, if that SOB can have it, so can I. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so that's the way it was in my house. <laughs> After that, we didn't, we didn't eat. Friday didn't mean a thing to us. It just, yeah, although I was a Greek and everything else, and we don't eat meat on Fridays, but I do. Everybody, <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> that's the way it happened. How old was your father when he got married? If your, your grandmother, I, he your was mother. 24, and she was 14. I see. A 10 year difference. Now, was your dad drafted into the army, or what? In the Turkish army, your yeah. dad was also. Oh yeah, he they, they they just took him, put him in the cavalry. He was a good horseman. He knew horses well. He could. Uh, I remember he we had a he he had a horse. And he named it Charlie because he must have got it in 1919. That's when my oldest brother was born. And my, my sister was born in 1916. So she's the oldest. And then he and, and then me. I was born in 23. And I got a younger brother that's born in 27. And his name is Peter. And, he's, and both Pete uh, and my brother Charlie were pilots. Uh, my brother Charlie flew for WLW. They had a small plane, a twin-engine plane, and he that he made a lot of money compared to what I was making. I, I worked on the railroad and everything. I, I made a lot of money too, but I had I worked 12 hours a day, six, you know, and stuff like that. I I did four hours time and a half every day, you know. To, Working. So that's the way I made my my living. So after your dad married your mother, who was fourteen, uh, how did he get out of Turkey then? If he was in the he he, he 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 went over the hill, and he he uh, he walked into a camp of Greeks, and he he was walking in, down this path, and this officer was walk Greek officer, seen him, and he was so he stood there, didn't make a move. He had a rifle, and he was on a Turkish horse and everything in Turkish uniform. And uh, my, when he came, my father said to him, hail fellow countrymen, you know. Tikhanis mm -hmm. patrioti, you know, that, that was hail fellow countrymen, you know, patriot. He says, you're Greek, yes. He says, I don't speak Greek, I, I speak Turkish. He says, uh, are you hungry? He says, Keep going. It says, before I come from, follow this path where I come from, they're going to eat there. He says, my dad said, won't they shoot me? He says, no. He says, just, just ride in there with your range lord, you know. Just So so he went in, 
when he went there, everybody started hollering, hey, Anastas, Anastas. There was uh, some Greeks there they're from, that knew, knew my dad, mm -hmm. you know. And so right there, so that, he got out there and they went to Piraeus. And Piraeus, he wrote him a letter back to Turkey that said he was in, Tur he was in Greece and they, 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 they kicked, kicked out of all the other houses and everything. They was on the beach, and that's when my mother had a calf, and she was going to take it back, and that calf was going to grow up to be a, a cow and give you milk, you mm -hmm. know. And, and, um, and so the, this Turkish soldier says, that's a Greek calf. I mean, Turkish calf, it's going, you know. And she says, oh, no, my mother lied. She says, it's a... It's my pet, you know, trying to con the guy to, and he he took it away like this, you know, and and so that that made my grandfather mad, and he had an American gun that they didn't know he had, and pulled it out and shot and killed the guy, shot him right in the head, and he I mean when he hit the ground he was dead already, and uh, so, but they cut his head off right there on the beach. My grandfather's head in front of your grandma. In grandmother. front of my my grandma and my my mother. Yep. yep. So. Um, and then the, the, a, an, an Italian ship came. It, Italy was neutral, and they uh, they came and got picked up a bunch of passengers and took them to Piraeus, which is the seaport. That's just underneath. Uh, Five miles from Athens, I'd say, you know, this, it's up a hill. Uh, this is on the, on the Mediterranean. Uh, yeah. And that's where my dad stayed there. And oh, yes, well, that, he said there was a, a German dirigible came and, and dropped some bombs in that city, in Paris. Yeah, the, cause, so, so they went through a little bit of war, even World War II. You One. Know. They they seen that I didn't know that till late. Was really that late. World War One? World War One. Right. Yep. Yeah. So then, as uh, uh, soon as my family got there in Paris, they met with my dad. My grandma had some money, you know, the money and everything. Why well, my dad came to America, and then then as soon as he got a job and everything, he sent for them to come. So and he, and they, they, they followed, and they came. They came to Canton, Ohio. Is yeah. that where they all came to? Yeah, Canton, yeah. Ohio? My, How did my why, sister? Why did he come to Canton, Ohio? I don't know. They, they, they see. They, they, there's a pipeline. Like, they, there's, they're hiring in Canton, Ohio, the steel mills. You know, so that's where he was working at Timken Roller Bearing Company in Canton, Ohio, and. Later on, the, turkey, the, the roller bearing company, you know, they see the, the, the cars, the, the box cars and everything, they had uh, uh, stuff in their uh, uh, boxes, hot boxes, or, 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 you know, it was oil in them, so, so the wheels get oil. But then the, the, they, when they got the roller bearings come in, they, they didn't have to do that anymore, see. That's what, uh, that's what my, my dad, Places where they, they was working at, they made the roller bearings there. So yeah, he he was just a, a helper there. That's all he was. Yeah. Well, you, did your mother work or anything? Uh, it, not there. Oh yeah, she was working. She was working as a seamstress there. Yeah, she was, and oh and, and oh that, and she worked at the what they call the cazzarola. They made. They had those pot, the pay, uh, pots now with the uh, an, enameled and everything, so you know, mm -hmm. uh, so so you can cook quick with it or boil something in it. Uh, yeah, they uh, they made that. She worked in a place there called the Katsarula. That's what the Greeks called it, and uh, yeah, they, they, they they that uh, they put enamel like on the. On their pots, uh -huh. yeah, the nice white, clean, and everything. So they like that you can cook with it. Yeah. And that's where you were born. Yeah, I, I, my my sister was born in Norwood, and then 
uh, that's a, and then my my brother, oh, me, and my younger brother were all three born in Canton, Ohio. Now, while you were in Canton, your grandmother still with you? Oh yeah, so she she even moved to Cincinnati with us. She died not too long ago, and all the time she was at the house, we talked Turkish. We did not speak one word of Greek or English, you know, and in the house. Oh, now we the kids we talked English to each right. other, you know, but. But uh, whenever Grandma come in, we talked to. So uh, I, my Turkish is, was as fluent as uh, uh, my English at that time. You know, what, I was. What it, made uh, your dad move to uh, Cincinnati? Uh, I don't know. He oh he 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 he, he, he it was right after the crash. Uh, he knew that, boy they because Timken closed up that day. You know. So he just he just got his he, we owned a house in Canton, Ohio, and everything. So we uh, he he came to Cincinnati and opened up a barber shop. See, he still has some money. So yeah, so that's what. Uh, Where did he open up his first barber shop? Right at right next to the Rialto Show between 12th and 13th on Vine Street. I see. Yeah, that was his first barber shop. The OK barber shop. He had a barber pole outside and everything. Yeah. Now, and your grandmother's with you when you moved to Cincinnati. Oh yes. Oh, she, and uh, she lived with us quite a quite a while. Now she she died in nineteen uh, 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 fifty nine years ago. When my today's today's the birth uh, my my daughter's fifty ninth birthday today. Mm -hmm. Is the ninth, uh, the, the yeah the ninth is today, isn't it? Yeah, the or seventh, seventh. Today's uh, the eighth. That see, it's a, well, it was yesterday. Right. It was the seventh. Right. She that's when the, she was born. My my daughter was born on the seventh, and uh, uh, so that's uh, yeah that that's where that it was. So and where were you living at when your father opened up his barber shop? Oh. Well, I, I think we we was uh, probably on Race Street. I think on Race Street. Yeah, about, about 15th and Race, right across. Oh, when whiskey started in, it, we was on Race Street. I remember they opened up a bar on a corner across the street. There was a Lutheran church close across the street too, somewhere you know next to that bar, I think. But that oh, the Irish bar. And there was a fist fight every night outside of that bar. The Irish, you know, they like to fight, I guess. And there was a, and soon as we, that's when whiskey started, open the, 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 oh, we lived on a third floor. The first floor, that got to be a German uh, bar. And it was called the, uh, what the heck's the name of the, uh, they had they had pictures all around. Yeah, it's the Schnitzel Bank. Schnitzel yeah, Bank. Yeah, they had it had a whole bunch of things. Yeah, yeah, the Schnitzel Bank. This, that, this, that. You know, and I think I remember I memorized about forty verses of that that song. You know, yeah, yeah, the Schnitzel Bank, and it's because uh, a, a German guys owned it. They was our landlord. They lived on the second floor. We lived on the third. Was that about the 1500 block of uh, Ray Street? That that was it's 13th or 14th, I think about 14th Street, may, or, or maybe it could have been 15th, I don't know. But they, right across the street there was a there was a church there, and, uh, was, and then the, was the, it was it near was it near Washington Park? Close to Washington Park, yeah. It was within two blocks of it, yeah. within about two blocks. So you're in the 1500 block of Ray Street. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where it was. Yeah. 15th, I think it was right on the corner, 15th. And, yeah. yeah. And so that. Uh, and you had the Irish bar on one side of the street. Uh, yeah, and the, yeah, and, and, the, and the Lutheran church, or was it a Lutheran? It's a Lutheran. Ba Baptist church. Lutheran. No, it was a. It was Lutheran. a Lutheran church. Yeah. yeah, Methodist, Methodist church. That's what that was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, see, I'm, I'm, uh, last year I could have told you everything real, real good, but now this, my memory isn't that, uh, you, you start to lose it. Yeah. So how I, long did your father uh, stay as a barber? 
Oh, till till he retired and he went he did and he went to Florida. Uh, that's way back I think forty eight or something like that. I don't know what uh, he uh, uh, he died. Uh, he didn't die. He 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 lived a long time till uh, that my mother outlived him. And so did uh, yeah. My dad died. He was eighty ninety. Uh, he was eighty seven. When he died, my mother was 99 when she passed away, uh, and so she was 14 years his junior. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, he married her. He was 24, and she was 14 when they got married. So, at some point, you moved to Republic Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we we, and then we stayed there for a while, quite a while. How old were you when and, you were living there? Oh, I don't. Oh, I was just. I was going to grade school. I went to first. I went to sixth district, but then then I was going to Rashig. I was in the oh the fifth fifth grade, I think. Yeah, fourth grade, fourth grade when I started there. Fourth grade, in the fifth grade, I remember I was we going to church. There they had a, a church thing, not a church, a Bible study, and we didn't. You didn't do that in public schools. You had to get out of school, and we walk across the street to the YMCA, go up the second floor, and that's the, 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 we'd have Bible study at the YMCA, the, the class. And then we walk back again to the church. I mean, to to the school. What was the name of the school? Uh, Rashing. Rashing. It was right across the street from the YMCA at Central Parkway, and uh, Elm, Race Race Street. Elm Street. Elm 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 Street. The Y is still there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Y is still there. Yeah. I yeah. I learned to play ping pong there and everything. I remembered the the mayor of Cincinnati. Uh, he he uh, he had a, a black chauffeur and he had a black uh, Cadillac. And he stopped uh, on Republic Street and there's about three of us sitting in. On on the on the step, uh, where I, the house that I lived, you know, two 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 brothers and myself. Uh, so, and uh, he got out, and he handed the three of us a year's membership to the to the YMCA uh, children's thing department. You know, mm -hmm. so I went there, and they had ping pong tables, and I learned to play ping pong there, but I swam. Oh, hey, it's, I learned to swim real good uh, there. So uh, I was, I'm, I'm like a duck in the water. Uh, yeah. I love to swim. What was the number on Republic Street that you lived at? You 1202. That's it's the first house on the, on the right hand side. Yeah. And, yeah. And I lived. We lived on the third floor, and we have to go up to the. the the fourth floor to go to the toilet there. They had a toilet, the regular flush toilet. But on that fourth floor also, we go up there and take a shower. There was a shower there. Wow. And for, uh, that's for the, all the people, you know. Right. You, you just go in and lock the door and take your shower and you come out and we'll leave the door open, you know. Yeah. But that's the way, that's the way it was. Because uh, uh, you didn't have hot water even. In in the, uh, all you had just cold water. Yeah. Yeah, but there they had the hot water shower I see. on the fourth floor. Uh, yeah. So you um, you lived there all through uh, grade for, for, school. Yeah, but for pretty much pretty much till till uh, 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 I was going to Old Woodward. It's still there, the Old Woodward, uh, and I was in the the tenth tenth grade when I quit school. I, and and I, I mean I just the tenth game just I, I just started I don't think I was there a month yet and I I quit school and I went to work for the Streetman's Biscuit Company I wanted a job to make some money I told them you know I don't want to waste my time in school dumb as hell you know how that goes but that's what happened to me and I'm the only one in my family that didn't graduate from high school. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way I, I got along, even though I didn't have no education. I I got along pretty good. At um, 
So you dropped out of high school at the beginning of the 10th year and you went to work at Streetman Bakery, bakery Company. Yeah, company. making making the uh, Streetman's crackers. Right. Yeah. The, um, uh, how long did you work there, would you say? Oh, six months, eight months, nine months, I don't know, not not too long. Then I went somewhere else. What I did then, I don't remember now. I can't, uh, can't tell you, but, uh, and, but uh, I, it, it was, uh, it was. I didn't like the, the guy that I was working with. I, uh, you had to, uh, you work, you had to put, put your money, your, your tray in, uh, empty, you know, the dough, and you pull out a, put out a, uh, pull out a full one, you know, and they're hot. So it's, you got uh, with gloves on, the, with big thick gloves with the, what do, you, what do they call that, with asbestos mm -hmm. gloves, yeah. So what other jobs did you have as a teenager? Oh, I don't remember. I, I had a lot of little, little things. Oh, I, I ended up, I was a spray painter. Yeah, I, I even went to uh, uh, Colorado to the uh, uh, place where they make the beer there. In the Coors. Coors. Coors beer in there, in there where they made it. I spray painted inside that, inside that big copper tank that they used to put the, you know, the beer comes in, see? But, uh, yeah, I spray painted that. All was uh, like liquid glass. It was uh, uh, th that's the type of painting I did. I had a uh, the guy that worked. I made ninety five cents an hour because I was a foreman. And I had two helpers. They would sand the thing and, and everything and and clean it and uh, the laborers. And then me and this other painter. Now that guy, the guy, the guy that was helping me was making ninety cents an hour, and I made ninety-five cents because I was the boss. But he he did all the thinking and the bossing and stuff like that. I did most of the work. He went and finished up what I missed up, messed up. That guy was an artist with a with a spray gun. And he you're was, still a teenager while you're doing that. Yeah, I guess I was. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was a teenager then. Yeah. That because, uh, oh, see, I can't, yeah, I, I, when I went in the Navy, I was 18, so. Where uh, were you at when you uh, went in the Navy? Where were you living at? Uh, on McMillan, uh, 22 West McMillan, just near Vine Street. Right. Yeah. Now, did your dad still have the barber shop? Yes, yes, for a while. Then, then, uh, then we moved to uh, uh, after the war. No. He moved. We moved to. Uh, uh, Price Hill, right. because my sister was living on Winfield, we we bought a house just b below that uh, on Rosemont, and uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I was like I told you, I was a pool shark. But and this, was, let's go back to uh, uh, McMillan's Avenue first. Okay, you're there, and you're what, 18 years old. I, that's when, well, yeah, I was in, the, that's when I went in the Navy, I think, or, or yeah. That's did when you I went. join the Navy, or yeah. did you get a draft notice? Oh, no, I never never got a draft notice at all. I, yeah, I joined the Navy. I knew that there was going to be a war. I knew that. Do you remember and when you joined the Navy? Yes, I did. I, and it, October the 30th, 1941, so it was before the war started. And uh, I just found out it was October. I knew it was in October, but I thought it was earlier than, than the 30th. But it was the 30th, this is the, my first day. And uh, then I remember December the 7th, I was still there. And the Japs bombed Pearl Harbor. I didn't know where Pearl Harbor was. I never heard of it. And uh, uh, that's I remember that. So then I, got on the train and uh, went to San Francisco and I, I got on an old ship, but that ship that I got on was the USS Henderson, AP-1, it's Auxiliary Passenger Ship Number 1. And before I got in the Navy, me and the guy that I joined with, I was at his house. Two days before I, I joined, and his father brought, brought out some films 
and showed us pictures of uh, the USS Henderson. He was a second class cook on that ship during World War I. So it was a World War I ship, it was a slow ship. Uh, you know, it had another, we had another passenger ship, and right now I can't tell you the name of it, it was bigger and faster than, than we were. We were 13 and a half knots. That was our standard speed, our flank speed and everything else. So you knew all about the Henderson before you got yes, to Yes, I did. I, I, I see, he, he, this man was a, a cook on it, showed us pictures of the kitchen and everything, you know, the galley. And, oh, it, it, he even told us about this, the pipes that come out of the, the smokestack and everything else. It, yeah. <laughs> So, where did you go to basic training at? Uh, Great Lakes, yeah. And what were you trained as? Oh, there? just no, just as a sailor, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just as a sailor. So I got uh, when I went went aboard the uh, Henderson, uh, I got in the first division and everything. So uh, I was just a, we call them deck apes, you know. It's a, I worked on the deck of the ship, handling lines. But we also had winches and booms on that ship where we could, we, we uh, I remember when we, we first left San Francisco after the war started, uh, and, and we was in one of the first convoys there. We had one ship with us called the Lumber Lady, and it was a three-knot ship. And this Lumber Lady was, it would sail from Seattle, would fill up with wood, and come all the way to San Diego and then go back to s s there. You know, because Seattle, that's where its home, home port was where we'd fill up with lumber. And we had that ship with us and it was a three knot ship. And it took us uh, 28 days, I don't know, no, we, the tw we got in, in Pearl Harbor uh, tw on the 28th of December. And so, and, and we left on the 14th so to get there. So it took us that many days, 14 days to get there. So it usually it takes five days to, to, for us to sh go from San Francisco to Pearl Harbor to back, back you know, five days. But here the, with this lumber lady, uh, we were zigzagging and it, it, it was in the middle of going straight. <laughs> so that's the way. Yeah, that's what happened there. We had two. We had two cruisers with us: a light, uh, light cruiser and a heavy cruiser, and had four destroyers in our convoy. We had about 18 ships. That's the first, first uh, convoy they went over there, I guess. But that's the one I got into and went into Pearl Harbor with. Were um, were the uh, the scenes from the uh, attack? Oh, oh, you could still smell the smoke and some of us you can still see some of it smoking yet yeah when i got there from and it was the 28th day of uh, uh, of uh, december yeah. what were your duties there at pearl harbor huh what did you do at pearl harbor oh well just uh, uh uh, we had, there was one big boat, they had a 50 foot launch and everything, and uh, we, uh, uh, what, what was I going to say there, uh, we had just, a, just that one, one sh boat, that, that, that got to be my boat, I got to run that thing, I was the coxswain of that boat, and I was just a seaman, I wasn't even, uh, and the captain of the ship, he didn't like me at all. I had a fist fight with a with a marine and 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 that was his favorite marine I beat up on and I didn't want to fight him at all. He had two girls and he wanted to show off how good he was. He wanted so he picked on I me. Mean, I I didn't want to go outside with him. I was at a bar and and I, we went outside. He only lasted about a minute. And I, I broke his nose so the first <laughs> One punch, <laughs> that was all of him. He, I think I did hit him in the stomach too. That, that uh, he 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 didn't. Want, he was out of out of breath and everything then. So, you're right. 
for you, you're temporarily on another boat besides the Henderson. Is that? Oh what? well, that was that was then. That was my first ship I got on. I stayed on it 22 months, and I got on a Hornet. I put it in commission, but before I put it in commission, I went to uh, diving and salvage school. Uh, so I uh, so I know how I was a hard hat diver. So. Yeah. Uh. I made extra, I think $5 a month extra. Uh, so I got a pay raise. What were your duties then? Uh, I was just, I was, uh, I didn't have no duties, but whenever they needed me, we had two uh, breathing machines we, we could breathe through. We could, we could put on our wetsuits, you mm -hmm. know, and get in the water with it and everything. Did you have to do that? Uh, not, not after. Uh, I, I left school. I did it when I was in diving school and everything. Yeah, that's in uh, uh, Norfolk area. Yeah, we uh, Newport News. Yeah, that's where I went to school at for the diving, diving and salvage school there. Yeah, and I got the highest grades by gosh that uh, that. That 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 school was commissioned way way during war, before World War One, uh, and uh, I got the highest grades that's ever been had. I think I must have got a perfect mark. But there was a big Greek guy. Oh, oh he was oh uh, he was a first class boatswain's mate, and uh, he was in charge of, of the group that I was in in with. Everything. So. so he didn't give me no answers or nothing, but I, cause I, but I studied and everything, and I got the highest mark in that school since it's been commissioned. So they told me that I got aboard the Hornet. Well, how long? Uh, after I got up, this is after the Henderson. Right. And uh, as soon as they found out that I, I, I was a diving and salvage guy, you know, they, they made it, they made me a coxswain. I didn't even take no exam for it, you know. In fact, I never took an exam in all the time I was in the Navy. So, so, um, so but let's go back to uh, Hawaii, and you're on the Henderson. How long did you guys stay in Hawaii? And oh, just uh, less than five days, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, I, I, I didn't even go ashore that trip at all. I stayed stayed aboard ship and everything. Uh, and we come back to we came back to San Francisco and we was on we called it the pineapple run because we used to have pineapples on the ship and come come back to state the states. Dole Pineapples was the the big company that, and we would load our cargo thing space was pineapples for the United States. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you came back to the United States? Yeah, back, back in San Francisco. But I lived on the, uh, uh, the Henderson. And back if we, I, on trips for uh, four or five months, I guess. And uh, then, then I got on, uh, yeah, then uh, when we went to some other island, uh, we left, uh, yeah, uh, we left and got on uh, way way down the South Pacific. Then we, get, you know, uh, on the Henderson. I, yeah, on the Henderson. We were the first ship in uh, this one place. Now I can't tell you the name of it. It's it's a big 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 island, and and I should tell you because we was the first ship there. It had a double harbor, and it, it was a French mandate island. Uh, and uh, when we went in, there was two. We was the first ship, the American ship, to go in there. But the the, the we had a lieutenant on our ship that was a uh, he was a, a captain on the, in the merchant marine, and he got to be my division officer. He was a, he was a uh, lieutenant, full lieutenant in reserve, and uh, he he, he took. Uh, he liked me right away. I got to be like his uh, father for, here I am, a, a kid, I'm 17, 18 years old, and he's telling me his troubles. You know, th this guy liked me for some reason, I don't know what it was. 
but uh, and he was a sailor, sailor. Cause when we got in the, to the, I can't think of the name of the place. He was he he took us in, and and we went through the first harbor, and it was uh, the first thing there was uh, seven or eight ships that the French sunk there, the French ships. They didn't want the, because Germany took over, you know, uh, France. And so, yeah, so that's the way, uh, and I seen them, we went in the inner harbor. And uh, we, we, there was one, there was a native there, had orange hair, and, uh, he was a black, black guy, but they had orange hair. They put peroxide in their hair, make it orange, because that was dressy, you know. When they <laughs> and we tell them put the put the line over the bit, bit, you know, and uh, he smiled and he didn't know what we was talking about. <laughs> so, so, yeah. While you were on the Henderson, were you involved in any of the any conflicts or battles? No, we we. We was in, we went to Midway, before the Midway thing. That's uh, the only place we went, because uh, we was too slow to go to, 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 to landing parties and stuff like that. They didn't, uh, you didn't want to slow up the outfit by having a slow ship like it. We were in Guadalcanal. Now that was, and there's a picture of my ship in it, you know, and we was right in the middle. We were going straight, and those guys zigzagging, you know. Because we was only a 13 and a half knot ship, and uh, these guys want to go 18 knots. Uh, right. Uh, they, they had, they had to, they, they were zigzagging, so this How long slow, were you? we slowed up their yeah. progress. How see. long were you around Guadalcanal? In and out, in and out. Uh, oh, we was at, uh, we, instead of being at Guadalcanal, we was on the other side of it. 14 miles away, there's a little island there that. Uh, that was the headquarters of the Japanese anyway. That, and I right now I can't tell you that, its name, see, because I I forgot it. What uh, were your duties there? Were you carrying people or a person? Oh yeah, we took troops there. Uh, we took uh, first mar Marines there, but then later on we we went back and and picked up a whole bunch of Army people. And when the Army replaced the Marines. They, 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 when the army came, they brought equipment with them. They brought armor, they brought every, lots of stuff. I mean, they was for the, the, the poor Marines when they came, they, just their, their rifles and their butts, and that, that's it. <laughs> that's the way it happened, you know. But uh, they, uh, I spent one night ashore in, uh, in Guadalcanal. Because uh, right, right by Henderson Field, and I was guarding a little creek that, that was there. Uh, no, no, no Japs came that day. You know, we did, I didn't fire a shot or nothing. So we had a 30 caliber machine gun in there, but I had a rifle, a Springfield 02. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was just one day. I uh huh. So where did you go with the Henderson after Guadalcanal? Oh, just uh, just all over, uh, and I can't tell you the names of the, the places. That, oh, later on we got we got the, it, we got down in the southern southern hemisphere. I, I after I got there, we stayed there. Uh, this is New Zealand and uh, Australia, you know. So mm -hmm. so I that area. I knew pretty good. Uh, we was in. I was in Sydney one day, and I made a mistake there. Uh, I wanted to. I wanted some female companionship, and there, and there was plenty of them there. There was there was about eighteen, twenty women to every man, in in Australia. Because as soon as there's a war going on, all them Australian boys they all go into service, and they're all gone. And here I came in there. And I walked into a Greek restaurant, and I, and I heard them talking Greek and everything. And, and that's when I first got off the ship. And I said, Tikanis uh, Patriotis, hail fellow patriot. Oh, you Greek boy, you know. So uh, here they they got me, and they took me around, and they showed me around. 
I didn't want to be around. I wanted to, I wanted a girl companionship, you know, and they, they wouldn't let me go. They, they finally they took me back to my ship, and we sailed the next morning. So that that was it. I said I'm not going to get around no Greeks. So uh, that was in Sydney. We that's the only. But then we down the, then and what the heck was the name of the other town that I was in? It's just way down at the bottom of of, of uh, Australia. Uh, it's uh, on on near near the uh, uh, east coast. Near uh, it's a big city. There's ten Greek churches in this city. By yeah, by the way, wow. ten ten Greek churches and. Uh, I didn't go to no Greek church, and I didn't talk. I don't want to talk to a Greek, yeah, because uh, yeah, that was because uh, I wanted <laughs> I wanted my girl companionship like I, that's the way that, uh, that's what I was thinking of, but that was the way that was. I can't think of the name of the town, big town, and a nice town. It was a uh, all uh, the people were just great there, uh, nice. Uh, and from there, where did you go? Oh, that uh, the, uh, after I came back to the states, I got on the, the Hornet. Uh, they, I was on the Hornet detail, but before I was in the Hornet detail, I went to diving and salvage school, and I I, I got the highest grades that they had uh, since uh, they commissioned that school. So that and that so was over at Norfolk uh, and Newport News. Uh -huh. Was that at Norfolk? And that, that was in Newport News. Yeah, we was in. Uh, uh, that's where I went to school uh, for for diving and salvage school there, but uh, yeah. So you would go down un underwater in a yeah, diving I, I suit. Yeah, I had yeah I had the suit. No, uh, we had two we had two suits and uh, there's two of us that was qualified. The guy the guy that I was with it was was a, the class before me. But he thought I was, uh, he, he didn't want to talk to me because I was like a professional to him. You know, he heard that I was, I had the highest grades. He he didn't want to hang around. <laughs> he, 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 he was, he says he, he almost drowned. <laughs> there. Yeah, he was something else. He's a nice kid. After that training, uh, um, did you ever have to use it and go No, on? never. Uh, that's a only time but say I used it before I I salvaged the boat in Guadalcanal it was a purse singer uh, 50 foot uh, boat that the uh, the Japanese was using for the fishing boat but they took the all the fishing stuff off of it and made it like a passenger uh, you know just a, a common thing to run around with and it was sunk. They sunk it at the island where I was at, and I, I brought, I got it out of the water and everything. So I was goofing off from staying on by ship, working on that. So I got, I got, I get it out of the water. And when you say got it out of the water, how do you get it out of the water? Well, I, I towed it to a certain place, and then I started dump, dumping water out. The higher the water level come up, the higher I pulled it up, and and uh, uh, so finally, I, I got it, all the water out, and and uh, <laughs> it, I put the skull and crossbones on the top. It was my ship. I, it, it was full of oil and everything, and off we went. So that's and they uh, they took it away from me. The, the Navy did. They they needed it. So that, that was a transport for them too. You know. Oh yes, I was on it one day. And I had a load of potatoes. Uh, no, no, not on it. That was that's before I got on that. I had a I was going to Guadalcanal with a load of potatoes, and I was mad because I haven't ate a potato for for a whole month. We was eating them uh, de dehydrated potatoes, you know. And I, I so anyway, being a good sailor that I was, I stole a whole thing of potatoes. And put the, uh, underneath the bench, so they covered up with canvas, so nobody'd see it. And and so I, we, we emptied, uh, we we give all the potatoes. At that time, the army was in uh, 
uh, Guadalcanal. The, the Marines was uh, were just relieved, and yeah, so that, yeah, I remember that. And, and we went in. Oh yeah, the, I thought we was going back to the states because we all had uh, uh, something wrong with us, our faces and everything. And, and they, the doctors looked at us and and they says, "Do you guys get around natives?" And we didn't get around no natives. I says, "Oh yes, yes, yeah, we've been around." And so they were going to send us back to the states to see what the heck is wrong with us. You know, our faces was all covered up with some, I, I don't know what the heck it was. Uh, the, the three of us, uh, there was- uh, With sores? Or you sores, didn't... yeah. And uh, so that, that was, uh, anyway, there was, there was no, it was nothing serious at all. It, it, it went away, just as, but, uh, but I, uh, I thought maybe to get us back to the States, but it didn't work that way. They found out that, that, that no, that's nothing at all. This <laughs> everybody's got it, you know. So uh, it was. I, I can't remember now what it was, but it was, it was in my medical record, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So then, uh, how do you uh, how do you get on the Hornet? Oh, uh, they they put me on. I was on the Hornet detail. They said, uh, you know, I was, had to wait to to before we even got on board the Hornet because it wasn't completely finished yet, you know. And uh, so so whenever it was finished, we got on. We was one of the first ones to get on. Where was it launched at? Uh, in uh, Newport News. So you were the first crew on the Yeah. Hornet? Oh yeah. We, we at CV12. CV12. Yeah. Oh. That, see, that was a. Yeah, that was the uh, the second Hornet. The All first right. Hornet was eight. Yeah, we was a CV12. You recall when that was roughly? Well, I could la last a couple a couple of months ago. I could have told you exactly what day, but right now I can't tell you what day it was, but uh, that was, it would have been uh, 1943? I guess it was 43, yeah. yeah I'm, see, uh, 44. I, 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 I imagine, uh, no, no, it was, it was uh, 40, 40, 42. No, the, the uh, first one, it was sunk October the 26th to 42. Yeah, that, and, well, that uh, was, it was afterwards, yeah, because we, because uh, I remember where they got sunk at, too. Yeah, they, Were uh, you there when they got sunk? Uh, no, uh, uh, we, we went, oh, I, uh, they, they, yeah, there was, we had a carrier, there was a carrier there, and we, we sunk it. Uh, before I got there, I was on the Henderson, so we wasn't in with that fast group, but I did see the ship before it got sunk. Uh, it was, they took all of, there was a carrier, and, if, and we had to leave, leave it, or, and if we left it, the Japs would have got it and towed it, and, and it would have been a carrier for them, and here was a, it was the first Hornet, and uh, so they, uh, uh, and it was a brand new ship for us. And here they had all the people off of it, everything, and the cruiser came by and they, they, they fired three round, three torpedoes in it. And they had everything open. Were up. you there when that happened? No, 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 I wasn't there. I was on the, I was on the Henderson, and it wasn't there, but that's what happened. But we seen it. I I did see the see the see the before it got sunk, and I didn't see them shoot it, you know sink it uh -huh. at all. Yeah, my my ship was there, and then got, got out. We we they they put us first out so we can get, because we was uh, this a thirteen knot ship. Uh, we we wasn't fast at all, so yeah, we had to go first. And from there, where did you go? Uh, to, to this island that I was telling you about that we was the first ones there, and, mm -hmm. and I can't think of the name of it. That's my trouble. See, with this 93 years old now, now last, last year I could have told you everything about it. 
But you come back to the States on the Henderson, and then you go to the uh, uh, went to diving Hornet. school. Got, uh, uh, went to what? The what? The diving school. Oh, the, yes, yes. Uh, but uh, as soon as I got back, yeah, as soon as I got in Norfolk, I, I signed up for it. Yeah, so, yeah, because I already took a sh ship out, you know, it's the first thing. Uh, Japanese fishing boat. I got it out of the water and sailing. Everything, everything was, yeah. yeah. So I, I always was, uh, and 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 in that class, I got I was I got the highest mark. So since it's been commissioned, this is before World War Two One. You know, yeah, that was it. That that was that's a diving school that I went to. So, tell us about when you first went on the Hornet then. Oh, they, they, they put me, we had a captain on there, uh, and he was not a happy, not a good, uh, I don't think, I didn't ask the officers about him, but none of the enlisted men cared for him at was all. Was that Browning? Yeah, 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 Miles Browning, Captain Miles Browning. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, he was a good man, very smart, but he was, the chief of staff for Halsley. And if he'd have stayed there, Halsley wouldn't have gotten in trouble. Remember all the trouble that Halsley got into? Because uh, he was, you know, uh, and everybody loved Halsley. You know that. Yeah. And, ev uh, and, uh, and he could keep, he could, he could tell Halsley, hey, you're going to do this. And, uh, yeah. and Halsley let him get away with it, you know. He could talk to, uh, oh, and he should have stayed where he was at instead of being on trying. But he wanted a carrier. That he said, you know, that he he was a captain of a carrier. You know, that's what he was. That's 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 that Miles Browning. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, he was uh, not a very popular guy. Finally, uh, they he got kicked off the ship. There, what happened? There was a movie going on, and and somebody in the back. They dropped something and it went boom, and it was like a, uh, uh, it, it was, they had a curtain down at the hangar deck so that people were working back there in, in, in the daylight, you know, and we were watching a movie at night, the captain and the admiral, and because uh, uh, so, I was right back behind them. Uh, 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 no, I was in front of them, I was sitting in front of them on, on, on the deck. Yeah, I didn't have a seat. They, they they were sitting on seats. I was sitting on the deck watching the movie. Yeah. And there was a big explosion, and w we lost a man overboard. Uh, somebody fell off the ship. And yeah, they blamed that on a captain, <laughs> Browning, <laughs> I guess. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, which cult was on there with us? Uh, uh, yeah, our, our admiral, yeah. And, uh, John Clark, yeah, yeah. Jocko. Jocko. He was a, he was a wonderful man. Um, so you were one of the first crew, member of the first crew that goes on the Hornet at Newport News. Oh yeah, yeah. And, I was on the, and when port. you when the ship left port, where did you go? Oh, we would we, we went down to the uh, in the Caribbean where we we did all our. Uh, speed things and uh, we're testing. Yeah, uh, uh, we we backed that thing down uh, about 34 knots. I guess we was backing down. You know, uh, just testing it out. Yeah, yeah we. Uh, it was a, a good ship. They they they. We still had people from the 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 uh, people civilians on there. They're still helping build stuff up for us, you know, from Newport News. <laughs> and it was out on a trial run with us, you know, yes, and still working. Yeah. But that they finished it up. They, they did a good job. It what were a, your duties on there? The what? What were your job? What was your job on there? Oh, well, well they, they, as soon as, they, as soon as I got aboard, uh, they, they, they said I was a coxswain, you know. What they, does a coxswain do? Yeah, yeah, they, they, uh, uh, I was a seaman at that time, and uh, I didn't take no test or nothing. They made me a coxswain. What were your duties as a coxswain? Uh, uh, I was uh, uh, 
for, uh, I was in charge of the after fueling station. Uh, I had some guys off my, my gun crew. Uh, DeFalco was an Italian boy from Brooklyn, and Widows was a little sailor boy from uh, Philadelphia. And uh, three, there's about five of us. And we, we did the after fueling station. Uh, uh, so we would fuel destroyers. It, see, after uh, these destroyers, you fill them up and, and that's their ballast. Uh, and they, they, they start running out of fuel, boy, they're, they're like corks going up and down. So they, uh, so they need to be refilled. They, even though they got some fuel, that, uh, that they're just too light, you know, in the water and everything. So uh, you have to fuel them. And so we, we did. We fueled all the destroyers and even some of the cruisers when they needed it, you know. But, uh, but I, that I was in charge of that after fueling station the, the whole time I was on a Hornet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So after your trial run, where yeah. and, and you we we went through the Panama to, Canal. We went through the Panama Canal. Yeah, we went to San Diego first, and then then left there and went right straight to Pearl. And that, and, that, and the, Miles Browning is still commander at captain. that time. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, he uh, he. Uh, when, well, we we had a, we had Air Group 15, and uh, that was our when we started. And here, this Air Group 15, as soon as we got to Pearl Harbor, Browning kicked them off and got at, uh, got uh, uh, two uh, Air Group two. Right. And they got to be our fa our, our main group, uh, and uh, they was a they was our favorite group because we that was our first group really, instead of the fifteenth, right. you know. Uh, now Air Group Two, just as an aside, included uh, Don Brandt and uh, and Ken Glass. Yes. Among yes, and, yeah. and Lee Glass was, Glass was yeah. And Lee Hightower also. And Lee Elite Hightower was on there too. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the guys that was on the on the Hornet with me, and, uh, and now, we was. Well, you're on the Hornet. Uh, excuse me for interrupting, but did did you ever uh, know uh, Ken Glass or, or no or Don Brandt? Neither or, one of or them. Or Lee Hightower? None. No, I never knew none of them. I never met none of them uh, on there. But me and uh, uh, Lee Hightower got to be buddies. We started going to different meetings from the Hornet Club. And right. after, we went to uh, uh, Pensacola, we went to here, there, different, right. different, all around, you know. Uh, so he was he was a nice man. I yeah. sure miss him. Yeah. So you were at, um, you're at Pearl Harbor and they got rid of um, Air Group 15 yeah. and took on Air Group 2. Uh, two. But you know, later on, uh, we had a ship, a, a, a New carrier. This is during the uh, uh, this operation, uh, and we had Jocko Clark was our admiral, and he was on the Hornet with us. And here we had a brand new carrier out there, and they had Air Group 15 on it. And here one day we shot down 62 planes. Our Air Group shot down. We didn't fire the gun at all on the ship. Our air group shut down like 60 planes or something. 62, At, I think. 60. It was. Well, it was it was, but but uh, two days later, this the the ship that we're with had air group 15 on it. It's a brand new carrier, and they got air group 15. Our old air group 15. Uh -huh. They shot down more planes, and they got the record. After only two days, we. <laughs> I think they we, shot down two more planes yeah, than you're Yeah, out they there, shot like down that. two more than we did. That, and that was, oh, that was well to me. I, it was funny because I liked, I, I, you know, that was our first group really. Right. Yeah, that's the group that we. Came, they didn't. Oh, they was having flat tires. They, they hitting the ground. Oh boy, they, and when you should see it's uh, terrible, you know. Flying on a carrier with an airplane, boys, dangerous work. 
<laughs> that was the turkey shooting the Marianas. Yep, it? yeah, as yeah. As they called we, it. Yeah, it was. So let's go back now. We're at Pearl Harbor, and Air Group 2 has replaced Air Group 15. Uh, how long did you stay in at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii? Oh, it's, it's just, just a few days, and we was out. Hey, hey they, you don't stay there long. You get your fuel, and, and they do it's some maintenance that they can do that we don't, we can't do. And, and off you are back. Hey, you're, you're four days. If you're in there four days, you're in there a long time. Um, while you're there, did you go downtown uh, Honolulu? I, I only went uh, two times. Uh, did you ever go to ho Hotel Street? Huh? No, no, I, I didn't. I never went there. That's that was the, the the place with the girls and everything. I didn't. I never went there. Not once. No. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I stateside, we 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 could we, we was I was back and forth. I didn't have to go. <laughs> I I went to uh, the fort that's there. In uh, you you have to go through 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 uh, Honolulu, and there was a fort. And I went there with a guy, and his brother was this, in the army stationed there in that fort. And I can't remember the name of the fort. It mm -hmm. was in Honolulu. Right. And, but as soon as I got there, hey, that's the first time I ever been in, a, in a, what was a jungle. You know, the trees and everything was uh, around. And uh, the, we had a big highway. It was asphalt and everything. And, uh, we went, me and the sailor, and uh, as soon as we, uh, they, they took us up in a, in a jeep and took us to inland where the, uh, the shooting range, they had the range there. This boy's brother was in charge of the, the range, so he gave us both a BAR, and so we fired the BAR, and both of us, because you know, he, uh, he was in charge of, of it. Uh, so I, anyway, <laughs> when I got back to Pearl Harbor and everything, they said, did you, uh, I, I fired a BAR, just, <laughs> they give me one, but I never fired a shot. I, they, I was stationed uh, by uh, uh, the, the field there, Henderson Field, and by a little creek where the Japs come up, you know, and no, there's no Japs coming up. That, I just stayed overnight. That was the only time I spent in, in uh, uh, what's called it, uh, there at all. Uh, yeah. When you left Pearl Harbor, where where did tell us about where you went on the Hornet? And oh, I did all the all the islands that you you went to. We we did all the the, the battles. Uh, there was. There's 19 battles all together, uh, in, 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 uh, uh, I think the, the, I was on uh, 10 of them, and uh, actually I was on 11, 11 of them, 11, 11, 11 battles, I think, or is it 12? I think it's 12, 12 battles. I've been through 12, uh, 12, 12 battle stars, I think I got. Yeah, I'm, I'm not positive. I'm now I am positive. But that's what it is. Yeah. Can you tell us about a couple of them? Oh, uh, we, if we didn't, it was nothing. Sometimes we didn't fire a shot. You know, the the planes were shot. Our, our airplanes did all the work. We didn't do nothing but sail around. Uh, but I remember one day we uh, there was a bomb hit. We got uh, general quarters, and I happened to be on a fantail. And so I started running up stairs to get up to the flight deck, and the flight deck was absolutely clear. And I'm running back to the island structure, and I'm running as fast as I can run. And this this guy dropped a bomb. It, it fell, I imagine, 50 feet away from the Hornet. And uh, the Japanese plane, and that bomb went off, and I, I'm running as fast as I can. I'm in the air, and I says, I'm dead. 
And then I hit the ground. I said, no, I'm okay. And I'm still <laughs> running. <laughs> it was, I felt the concussion all around me, you know. Is that right? That, that oh. was that. That was that. <laughs> and then I got the, that, that was the only, just one plane dropped one bomb. And it missed. It just by maybe 50 feet or maybe long, longer, you know, farther away. I don't know. Yeah, because I didn't see the. the that where the water came up or anything, because I was running, trying to get to my gun station because it was, you know, I wanted to get on it. So, yeah. Now, what kind uh, the gun station you're on? What did what? That's how, Quad Five. That's on the. Uh, it's on the after superstructure of the. You know the, the after end. You got two. Uh, you got twin five inch. Uh, 38s and then twin to five thirty eights on the uh, like uh, and then there's my my gun quad quad seven uh, we're there and then quad five on top of us uh, that was uh, uh, that that's the after end of the island structure uh, that's where my station was and that's the best place because when you're we always run away from the battle, you know, so we get to shoot at everything that we can see and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, that one day I, I told you I, I shot down that airplane. Uh, uh, I, this, this, uh, this guy was just a, he was, <coughs> uh, he was flying a s scout plane. And it was a fighter. Now, it was a regular fighter plane, but it had extra tanks in the back of it. So, so they could fly farther, you know, and uh, he was flying at 5,000 feet, and he had the canopy open because he might as well enjoy it, you know, the, the air. And he was not not had full throttle on it. It was just so he could fly, yeah. and he was enjoying the weather and everything. And he was going back now. He already reported this to, to the Japanese. And everything. And I says I'm going to try to kill that SOB, and and so I, uh, I started firing at him. You're firing what? A, a 40 millimeter, but uh, just just uh, uh, the ammunition I'm using is just high explosive, not not high explosive uh, tracer. If you use H H I T, it's a high explosive tracer. After your tracers get so far. It explodes the shells. You see, you got a fumalite mercury cap in there that explodes, and it you, that makes a, you you could have some steel in the air that planes have to fly through or something, you know. But uh, uh, that's the way it was. I, I see. I can't remember everything. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, so you're firing at him, and. Uh, well, well, oh, oh, yeah. Well, I I fired way over his head, and in front of him. So, so but by, by the time, by the time he, you know, my shells fell down, one of them must have hit him in the head, and never, just knocked him unconscious or something, you know, because it did not explode the the shell, and here. Uh, he he started going straight down. I mean, uh, just like the, right straight down to the water, and uh, they they're telling me, "Who's that firing a gun?" You know, and I and I've got the phones on, and, and I have and I got the bicycle handlebars that I'm firing the controls of the gun, and uh, so finally I says, "Quad five. He says, "What are you firing at? Is that he's out of your range?" I says, if you look back there now, I says, he's going straight down 90 degrees into the water. I says, and, and he's not on fire at all. He's both, his canopy is open, you know. <laughs> so I must have hit him on the head with a with a round as it went by and it never, it wasn't penetrating, you know, because uh, mm -hmm. he was, he, he must have been dead and uh, he straight, straight down, and they hit the water, and everybody's seen it, you know. <laughs> and then the next day or two, they give me this. They give me the middle, one of the medals. I can show you which one it was. Yeah, that they gave me. And Admiral Clark was on our ship too at that time, 
And here I had flown uh, with him from, uh, what's the name of that town? Pas uh, it's Pasadena? Uh, no, it starts with an S, I think. Uh, uh, anyway, it's only about 40 miles from San Francisco, no, a little north. Sacramento? Sacramento. Yeah. Sacramento, uh, uh, that's where I, uh, my, this, what happened uh, on the, uh, I was going, I was in a bar in, uh, on a sat on a Friday before I, before they decommissioned my, the Hornet, the, the Henderson. And we were going to, Saturday we we're going to decommission it at noon. And my leave is supposed to start at noon. But uh, so this is fri Friday night. I I'm a, I'm in this it's a, a Chinese place where they have uh, China in Chinatown, and I'm in the bar downstairs instead of being upstairs where they get the chorus girls and all the dancing and everything. I'm down at the bar, sit at the bar, and it's just me and the bartender, and that's it. And here come two, a colonel and a, and a major. They both they both got CBI patches, and they sit in. That that colonel keeps looking at me. Finally, he, he couldn't stand it anymore. He come over, and he says, "Swabby," he says, "Where do I know you from?" I don't know, Colonel. I says, uh, "I'm on the. I was on the transport ship, boy." He says, "I never been on a boat in my life. You know, a boat." <laughs> I didn't say nothing about that, and he says, "What? What? Where are you from? In uh, you know, in the United States?" I said, "Cincinnati." Is, is your last name Petro? Well, I'm my I pronounce it Petro, but my oldest brother is a he's he pronounces his name Petro. I says, "Yeah, Petro. Yes, I'm I'm George." Oh yes, he says, "I remember you too." He says, "That's where I seen you from." Your, your your brother, what's he doing? I says he's stationed at Wright Patterson Field. He says I'm flying the Wright Patterson Field tomorrow at noon. I'm leaving Sacramento, and I says my leave starts at noon. He says tell him the, that you got a flight and you want to go to you know Sacramento to to the airport and and I'll fly you back to your brother. Sure, I get a free pass, you know so. I says, all right, I'll, so, so the, in the morning I got up. Now, you can't, I can't go to the captain because the captain, he, he don't like me at all. I, but I, so I went to the yeoman, chief yeoman, his yeoman. Uh, and and uh, I told him, it's, oh, heck, he handed me my papers. He says, go ahead, take off now. So I, I had a sea bag full. I took it to Railway Express Company and dropped it off, and uh, then I uh, that's a, a cab. Then I went to the bus station, caught a bus for Sacramento, and uh, that bus took me right to the gate. Instead of uh, it, it wasn't before that was before we even got to the our stopping point, because I, I told him I'm wait, you know I'm supposed my plane leaves at noon. And here it was about 12 o'clock. We get in there. And they says, "Your name, Petro?" The guy's at the gate. Uh, I says, "Yeah, come on, get in the jeep." Uh, and they went straight to this plane that was waiting out there and had the ladder still up and everything. And I I carried my little handbag up there and they pulled it away and away we went. And I'm sitting next to Admiral Clark. There's only one seat uh, vacant, <laughs> and he was sitting there. Just and, and uh, so I I says hello he says hello to me and, and everything that he didn't do too much talking and anyway uh, the 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 the, 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 the uh, pilot the, the the knew me what was taking me back uh, he had two desserts that uh, they had extra. He says, "Give it to the two sailors, you know, to the, to this." You know. So here, he, here he comes, and they come with this this extra dessert that we had, 
And boy, this this admiral, he's eating it. And he looked at me real serious. And he says, they won't let me have this aboard ship, but these people don't know. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. And he, he got the des extra dessert because he knows me, you know. <laughs> and he had to wait for me before the plane took off. <laughs> you know, so he thinks, my man, this guy's something else. He's a, and he's a sailor. You know how come? Uh, yeah, so that's <laughs> that's what happened. And oh yeah, so we got in into uh, in, uh, to Texas in the Panhandle. There's a city I can't remember the name of the city. It's a big city. We landed there for fuel, and I I I, I got bumped. They said, uh, uh, and so I went and told the captain, the, the skipper, the, the pilot, I says, I'm bumped. Who bumped you? I, I don't know, some army guy. And uh, so he went over there, and he seen that guy. He says, get off. You know, his, the, his father owns a big, big a Jewish guy. He owns a big plant somewhere and multimillionaire and he and his son is works uh, he don't don't have a job he just flies around the country enjoying himself you know mm -hmm. he ain't he ain't gonna go to war that's for sure so that's what happened <laughs> so they put him off and kept you oh on? yeah he kept me he took me back and guess what he says don't get off till i get off I'm, i'll be the last one off he says you stay, you you stay on here with me, and when I came down the ladder, my big brother was there to, to smile and at both of us as we come down, and uh, so yeah, so he had a car, so he he brought me back to Cincinnati that day, and he gets off a couple of days on account of that too, because I'm there. <laughs> so that's how you met Jocko yeah, Clark. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's when I sat next to him all the time from. And, but he didn't talk too much. But then, uh, but he was on board ship when I shot that plane so, down. So yeah, that's where we're going now. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, I shot that plane down. He, he, he remember who I was. He says, I want to see him. Tell him I want to. Uh, I went up there. He says, I sat with you I, all the way to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right and he says, him. you got you got bumped and you didn't get bumped <laughs> and everything. And he told me all about it. You know. Uh, he was, and, and he smiled, and he said, you shot down the plane by yourself. He said, so, and then they, I got a medal, and it's, it's in, the, in my box there. I'll show it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What an accomplishment. Yeah, that was, that was easy. <laughs> yeah, that, that plane... Yeah, it must have, it, I must have hit him in the head with a, with a, one of my shells. Yeah. yeah they, and it didn't, it was just a glancing blow, but that was enough to put him out of business, I think. Was yeah. the Hornet ever hit? No, 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 he never was hit. Uh, we, I, I, there was a bomb went next to it, because I know it, I shuddered once, and I says, I'm dead. And then right. I says, no, I'm okay. <laughs> Just for a second, you know, how that goes. It, um, it's real fast. And it, it, the, the, the water, they, it hit the water, didn't even hit the ship at all. Mm -hmm. You know, the bomb exploded, you know. Uh, that's two of them. That, that this, this guy, uh, he came all the way across us. Now he was, I think my gun really killed this guy before he, he was he, while well, he was coming down, because he didn't move that throttle. At, I mean, he didn't move his uh, aiming point. You know, he just flew right over the ship into the water on on a port side. He came in from the starboard side and hit the water. Just uh, never. Uh, that, 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 that's the closest one that uh, got to us. Did you have any men um, that were? Uh under, killed by killed. Him? no never no we never had that no bombs hit us at all none not once how close were you to the action at the uh turkey shooting the marianas oh lots of we was there all time the whole time you know uh, that 
Did you see the the aerial dogfighting going on? Oh, not too much. Not too much. We, uh, it was out of our sight. You know, the, they they fight away from it. But uh, yeah, but we was we was uh, there. I, I remember. Uh, oh, we left. The, the, uh, uh, we was uh, uh, me and uh, a, a group of people was on uh, on Guadalcanal on the uh, oh, what the Saipan. It was on Saipan, and uh, here the ship took off and left. My I, here I'm on, and uh, I got the, I got the ship's boat with me and everything, and and. Uh, and my the Hornet took off, and left. Went back to get uh, rearmed, re, you know, refueled, and everything somewhere else. And we was there at Saipan, and so I I went on another uh, ship there, and I says, "You got uh, this, this is a seaplane tender." I says, uh, "You got a ship? You got a plane to flying back to this island so we can?" No, he says, "But uh, I says you can have this boat, you know." And I had it all dressed up nice and everything, <laughs> clean. And I said, you can have it, I'll trade you, that'll be your pay, your pay. And he says, we'll get you a flight. So they took me ashore. They we got on the army plane. It flew us into to, to this, where we where we was at. I forgot the name of the place. And um, I got off, I waited for the ship to, to come in and then they took me to it with a boat, you know, and I got, and I, I beat them there. <laughs> you know, the Hornet just got there. How did, uh, why, how come they left you there on Saipan? Because, uh, because they had, they got orders to move right now. I and uh, they, so they, the, the boat that I was running was 29 foot uh, uh, launch, you know, and uh, that was, uh, that, that was a coxswain of it. So I left it there to, with that uh, seaplane tender, and they put me on another boat, took me in, into the land, and got me a flight. And I beat them there. I stayed. I stayed overnight. And the next morning, uh, they, they put me on a boat. And here, when the Hornet come in, it dropped its hook. I went alongside, and I was the first one aboard. You know. And so. Any. Um any other uh, action on the Hornet? Well, I was, uh, <laughs> this, this, this happened. I came in one night and uh, it, what happened to uh, the, the, Lex, the Lexington, was it the Lexington? Was, uh, was, uh, we had the Admiral on the, on the Lexington uh, and he was aboard the Hornet. And then, and then uh, what happened? It, it got dark, and everything. And they nobody watched where, what was going on. And uh, now it's time for the admiral. He had his own boat to go back to the Lexington. And uh, so I just came in from a trip, and they hollered to me. He says, "Do you know where the Lexington is?" I, I said, "Yes, sir." He says, "Well, can you?" Turn your running lights on. We had we had an air raid alert, so they there was a Japanese plane that dropped a bomb on land there. Uh, so we had this alert, and so all lights were off, no boats running with li running lights on or nothing, you know, and everything's dark. And he says, uh, "My orders: turn on your running lights." And light up the starboard gangway for Admiral So and So to come to board the Lexington, and that was his. Uh, I forget the name of the Admiral even, and uh, I says yes. Uh, so here I turned the lights on and went, and I got to the starboard side there, and the officer of the deck hollered, "You in the boat? Turn them damn lights off or I'll shoot it." I says Admiral So and So has come aboard. He says, very well. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I got alongside and, and he got off the boat, you know, and went up the ladder and everything. And they said, what are your orders? I said, 
light up the, the Lexington so, so the admirals both were there. And he says, uh, I says, you know, I told him what my orders were. And he says, okay, thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, I took the admiral back. I lit, lit up the gangway for him. I let him walk up with my light because everything else was black. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so, any any other experiences you want to share with that us about a, the Hornet? That's one of them. I'm, I'm just glad and happy to tell you about that because that was kind of funny in a way. Yeah. I, I, you, most of the, I loved running a boat, especially at night. It gives you a, a power of, of, you know, hey, I'm in command of this thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 a feeling that is wonderful. I I I, I worked many many nights, and you know, people gripe about working all the, the hours and stuff, but I didn't. I never did. I I loved to run a boat at night. It, it, it's just something to it. It's and and I, so I was I was a happy guy when I was running the boat. Yeah. Um, where were you at when the war was over? Were you still on the Hornet? Oh yes, oh yes. I, yeah, yeah. We uh, no. Uh, were you no, at? A no, I wasn't. I think I I got off, and they they uh, my uh, they said I was going to get. We now what happened? No, we got our flight deck was. Uh, were you on it when? Huh? The, were you on the Hornet when the typhoon happened? Yes, yes. That we, the typhoon was in that typhoon, and our bow was dog-eared. You know that. You know the, here's here's our flight deck, and it was like this. Where was that at? Do you recall? Uh, no, I don't re recall. But our uh, uh, here. Every, the, with the first plane we tried to f fly off, turned over on its back and landed in the water of uh, a fighter plane. Thank God we got the we got the pilot out of it. You know he he's okay. We picked him up, and he, he never got hurt at all. You know he was in the, he, he he hit the water upside down. You know, crawled out and he had his life jacket on. He blew it up and and he's floating and the, so they picked him up and but uh yeah that's the way that's the way it happened that um that had to be a, a one heck of a storm uh, it was it, it buckled was, uh, it actually I, buckled the deck on the horn right it did yes it will see we went into the water and, and when we come up it just just took four, like it was like 52 feet back there 52 feet uh, back on on this side, you know, and uh, uh, that that was uh, all that was hanging over. Uh, Were there any injuries on the horn? None, none, none. Most of, nobody got hurt. Nobody got hurt. But uh, we was we had that in front of us. Then we, uh, they uh, we 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 oh we we made a raid afterwards, and we had to back down, and we was going backwards, and the planes were taken off from the fantail. Instead of the bow, you know, the, our, our, we we sent a, ra a, a fighting group out. For, yeah, we did that <laughs> with uh, with the Hornet because our uh, uh, bow was dog-eared. You know, the, yeah. the flight deck was dog-eared there. So they had to land from aft and take off yeah, from aft. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, that was the way it, it happened, and then they sent us back then. Yeah, so they sent you back to where? Well, well, we we was going back to the states, so we ended up. They took us back to the states, and then I got off there, and they 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 said I was finished. They, you, what city? Uh, where? where, where? Uh, San Francisco. San, um, they said I was finished, so I went back to to. I got thirty days leave. Oh no! It was it on the, the arm? The the war was still going on. I didn't get, I got 15 days leave or something. But while I was home, the war ended. Okay. And I got back and uh, it was, uh, they, I don't know what happened then, I forgot. See, I, I used to be able to tell you all this stuff, but, but now I can't remember everything. 
it, it's 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 awful that I can't remember that because I I just went through it, you know, and, and I, I I I I how many times did I tell it to people the same thing I'm telling you, you know, it's uh, and I can't finish them all. I, so you went back to San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. They, they. Uh, they I went back and and I and I got stationed there at that Alameda Naval Air Station. And I was in charge of two sailors, and we swept in front of the bank. The we had three hangars, and we kept the cigarette butts off. That's a, that's about all we. You know, there was no paper around. There just cigarette butts. And, We'd sweep them up, and uh, that was my job to, uh, with two sailors uh, s s taking care of that. And I got tired of that, and uh, I wanted uh, I wanted to go back to sea. And I was, uh, and I said I want to go back. So I told his first lieutenant. He said, "You're the only sailor I got." He said, "I want to keep you." I said, "Well, I, uh, I said I look at the lights over there, and I says I'm in San Francisco, and I'm broke." I need to get out of here. I, I'm looking over there and I can't get there. <laughs> I I don't have 35 cents to pay to, to go to the movie here. You know, I told him. <laughs> so, so I says, I have to go. I'm I, I'm not used to being a, a shore, you know, ashore and not going ashore. But cause now I'm, I'm completely broke. Yeah, so, so, he, so I got on the uh, Catachan Bay, I think it was. Uh, yeah, and I'm glad I got on because it took me to, uh, to China and everywhere, you know. Uh, so, so that's that's good. I, what I, was the name of that ship? Catachan Bay. Catachan Bay. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a jeep carrier, you know. And then later on, they they took all the jeep carriers and put them in one spot, you know. And, and uh, uh, they had them in. Uh, uh, Boston. They, we had a, a, a ten or twelve of them in Boston. But besides one battleship, I forget the old battleship. Yeah, and it was sitting there too. I remember I went on a working party to bring it in. It was a, the crew was gone. It was it was just a dead ship. And they, but I I got to be on the on, you know the landing party for it. So they, Put me on it, brought, so we brought it in. Now, where did you, where, where'd, where'd you go into China? Oh, that uh, with with the uh, with the uh, with the Catachan Bay. We went to uh, 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 the the place I liked best was uh, not Shanghai. It was uh, a city just right across from. Uh, uh, it's on the other side of the Yangtze River. Uh, before you get to, uh, uh, before you get to, uh, uh, can't think of the name of the, the Korea. Before you get to Korea, it's this, uh, there's a uh, 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 Sing Tao. Sing Tao. Sing Tao, China. It's a big city now. Sing Tao's where good it's a nice it's a, well i thought it was bigger than shanghai that's definitely that's, that's not so that's you know shanghai's got way many more people than mm -hmm. sing tao but sing tao to me it looked like uh, you can go for uh, drive for five hours you're still in sing tao you know you're you in, do, a, in a rickshaw yeah. <laughs> you do a lot of, did you do a lot of li liberty there this just yeah I, I made some liberty so i i, I really loved sing tao yeah, better than I did in Shanghai. Yeah. yeah, it was a good Liberty town. Yeah. So, did, um, so when do you when do you get discharged, George? Uh, you come back from yeah um, yeah yeah. Were you uh, discharged while you were still on the on the uh, jeep carrier? Yeah, no, I was yeah I was on uh, no I was on the. the uh, I got a. I was on a small uh, decommission in the ship. Now I I wrote a book on decommissioning. By the way, uh, I've uh, I've uh, I was the guy that uh, 
I decommissioned a lot of ships and everything, and uh, the the uh, the admiral that took over for from uh, Halsley after he 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 retired. This admiral took uh, he was he was a friend of mine. He, he and I was in the same class. We was decommissioning school. We went to decommissioning school together. And uh, they weren't supposed to send an uh, enlisted man, but they made a mistake and they sent me out of, uh, out of uh, Boston. They sent me to, 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 uh, to this decommissioning school. So I went there and I got, uh, I got some high grades there and everything. And, uh, so I, I wrote a book on decommissioning with, you know, with the, and uh, anyway, they, they, they made about 15, 18 copies of these books and everything. And I, uh, this the guy that was, went to school with me, and everything, he ended up, he took over uh, what's called uh, Admiral, uh, what's called place in, in uh, 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 he was see I can't name, he remember replaced names. replaced Halsey. Yeah, Halsey. He he he, he, he uh, yeah, Admiral Halsey. He uh, uh, took his place, and uh, yeah. Then we had a first. We had a uh, chief of staff, a civilian guy. Uh, he came to Cincinnati, visited us, and I was uh, retired from the Navy and everything. And I, I, I welcomed him aboard and everything. And uh, he says, I want to take you back to Washington, D.C. with me, you know. So he, uh, I give you a job there. So I says, okay. I says, so I, I went to work for him. Uh, yeah, yes. When did... Um we're uh, we're approaching the end of our uh, our time limit here. Uh, you joined the the Navy in October the thirtieth, nineteen forty one. Right. When did you get discharged? I I don't remember the date. Uh, what uh, after the war was oh, over? Oh, the war was over. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, that's that's when they did. And and I was still in when I was decommissioning the ships, and I was gonna I was on a six-year cruise. I signed up for six years. Oh. I spent five years, one month and ten days in service, and I got out before uh, before that six-year term uh, because so the congressmen uh, they wanted uh, uh, they so wanted to did, save some money. You did five years what? Five years, one month, and ten days. Service. So that would make you uh, discharged in um, 1940, uh, the end of December or January 1947. Something, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I, I don't remember the dates and everything, but uh, I, I, I know exactly how many days I served in the service. Yeah. That I remember that the, the number of dates. Well, we've, before we end. Uh, We've got about 10 more minutes of tape. I wanted to have uh, Brian ask a few questions, George. Sure, glad, glad to. I was wondering, uh, you said you joined, right? Joined the Navy? Yeah. Why did you join the Navy? Why not the Army? Or the well, I, I tell you what, I, I was in, uh, 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 in uh, J July 1941, I was in Fort, uh, uh, in, in uh, Indianapolis, uh, Fort Benjamin Harrison uh, in Indianapolis, uh, and, and I spent one month there in the at CMTC, the Citizens Military Training Center. So uh, I got a little bit of infantry training there, and I fired a Springfield 02 rifle and all that stuff there at, on the range. And I didn't pass the, the, the I, I, I flunked the test in a, on uh, getting the medal for the, uh, my thing because 
uh, here this uh, guy put put on this ba armband on me, and uh, I never seen the, this guy was from New York, and I didn't I wanted to beat him up so bad. He was a horse's butt, and uh, he put this on me, and uh, and he's got a big smile on his face, everything. And the first shot I fired with the, my rifle, I I, I hit I hit way in front of the front of the target. You know, I didn't. Uh, he, he it was awful uh, trying to trying to fire with that that guy up there with me. And he had me all. Uh, I couldn't move my arm, and I, uh, that that rifle kicked my shoulder. I thought I got kicked by a mule. You know, uh, it was everything was messed up. So how did that lead you to join in the navy? Yeah. So I it, well, there was a bunch of guys going. And I says, I'll go with you. That's what happened. Yeah. So, and and the two days before I joined, I went to this. Guy's house is going with me, and his father was on the USS Henderson and talked all about it, showed pictures of it, and I, I, I saw pictures of the Henderson before, I, and he was a second class cook, uh, the father of this guy, and he, he and I got on the Henderson uh, together. Uh, Were there a lot of guys in your neighborhood in Cincinnati who, who joined? Or no, you know? no, just uh, I, I didn't join with anybody. I just Joined by, by, my, by myself, but uh, you know you get to know people. What about your brothers? Oh, my brother, uh, uh, he, my oldest brother was already in the Army uh, Air Corps uh, before in peacetime, way in peacetime. This is in. Uh, he went to Chinook Field and to uh, another field there. Uh, uh, were Scott Field, where he went to school, mechanic school. He and so he got to be a, 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 a and E, a airplane engine mechanic. If you're an A and E, you can write a tag and stop that plane from flying. You know, you can put a shop mm -hmm. tag on it. In other words, uh, uh, he he can do everything. He can fix airplanes and engines to it. He was qualified. And he was a, a heck of a mechanic. He was a mechanic when he was a boy. I remember during the, the Depression. Now, he was just a young, he was no more than 12 or 13 years old. Uh, some lady gave him an iron, and it didn't work. And he took it, and he took it apart, and he needed this little piece, of, like a celluloid thing that was inside of it. And he he took that uh, to he went to the uh, hardware store and they said they'll they'll sell him uh, one of them for a dime. He didn't have a dime, so he went to the barber shop. And my dad told my dad he so my dad gave him a dime to 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 buy that part for that lady. He says and do not charge her nothing. You hear? Don't you know, for fixing it. He put that in. It worked. Because uh, he he uh, that's the way he was, and then he went to uh, uh, in the army. He went to Scott Field and Chanute Field, two mm -hmm. places where he went to school at. For and he got to be what they call an A and E, airplane engine mechanic. Yeah, that's that's my brother, uh, uh, oldest brother, and he was a, a horse's butt of a guy. He didn't. He he did, he wanted to be the the big shot of the family, uh, and w if I did anything, he didn't like it at all. You know, whatever I did. So, and my youngest brother knew how to handle him. He just stayed away from him. So, did your youngest brother go into service? Yes, he was he was drafted in at the time of Korea, and he he thought, well, oh, he's going to go over there as an infantryman. But then I met. Uh, 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 there was a uh, veteran from uh, Cleveland, and uh, we got to be friends. And I was talking to him, and I told him that uh, my uh, my nephew he wants to, he wanted to be a 
mechanic for airport for automobiles and trucks and stuff and uh, he just got drafted and uh, he's in this place in Newark uh, New Jersey and uh, so so anyway I, I I told him that and he says is he in so-and-so field there I says yes he says my son is the colonel in charge of that he says that your your nephew wants to go to that school, we'll, we'll get him there. So he talked to him. He had the boy come up to, to his office and he says, I hear you want to go to, he says, yes. <laughs> How do you know? He says, your uncle George <laughs> told my father. And he says, and whatever my father says I have to do, he says, you're going to that school. And he sent him to a school in Tennessee. And he got to be a, a he, a air, you know, a mechanic uh -huh. for for, uh, but regular tr trucks and everything. He, and he is good. He boy, he just. Uh, well, I had some. I had a car down in Florida, and he was down there, and had something wrong with it. Boy, he just fixed it in about two seconds, just like that. Mm -hmm. uh, really, Brian. George, I had another question. After the war was over, did you have any, uh, any? Uh, desire to uh, stay in the military stay in the Navy no no I didn't I didn't care for the, uh, the Navy after I come out of service it was a different Navy altogether just uh, to me uh, I liked it during the war but after the war uh, I didn't I didn't care for it, it was not uh, peacetime didn't didn't go too good for me you know well it was of course, I didn't. I wasn't aboard ship more. I was decommissioning ships and stuff like that. That's where I was at. I was aboard ship, but I was decommissioning ships, and and I wrote a book on decommissioning ships. I I, I think I've I've got a. I might I might have a copy of it at home now. I don't know whether I have or not. I'd like to see it. Did you know what you wanted to do? When you came back to Cincinnati. Did you know what you wanted to do? When no, you back? no, I didn't. I did. I so I I just uh, uh, I I I knew I was I was working at uh, Crosley's, and I uh, I met this girl there that I I thought of. Oh, I better I'll marry her, and uh, I said I better get a better job than working here. I was making twenty nine dollars a week. Uh, there at the Crosley's, so I said, so I got a job working on the railroad. So, yeah. What was the girl's name? Uh, uh, Jenny, Virginia, Virginia. Uh, and her last name? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Think. Uh, oh, she's got four sisters. Is that your wife I'm talking about uh, now? Yes. Yeah. She had she had four sisters and a brother. Mm -hmm. Her younger brother, yeah, he 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 went in the navy too, mm -hmm. and uh, when when I came out of the navy, I had a brand new suit uh, uh, of, that I bought in Shanghai. I paid uh, thirty dollars American money a lot for of that, money. Uh, that, and the the uh, rate, of, rate of exchange was seven to one at the time, which was a, a real good exchange rate, and. Uh, and I give him my black suit, you know, with the the pants and everything. Oh, oh man! And uh, anyway, he passed away, and he left my daughter money. Not he had two sisters uh, living. No, he had two sisters living, and uh, uh, my that uh, so. And, and uh, my my wife was his uh, his, his other sister. Uh, she passed away. Uh, and, when uh, when did you get married, George? I in 1950. Where did you meet your wife? Uh, in at work. Uh, I was I, wor I was working at Crosley's as a uh, 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 in the shipping department at Crosley's, and I I was a, what they call a uh, uh, I, I got a little bit more pay because I could. Uh, I took the box cars and I could load up the things so that the things don't shake and fall and break. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and there, there's a name for it. 
what, what my job was, and I can't remember the name right now. It was uh, uh, that I could uh, block block this uh, this stuff up so it'll stay. If it's just a half a box car, you know, full of food, uh, right. stuff of, of television sets, it it won't move. If, if when they switch cars and stuff, you know, it'll still stay there and it won't break nothing. Uh, that's that was my job. I I got extra money for being that kind of a that's shipping you, department is guy. You, is that how you end up working for the railroad job? Yeah, I started working for the railroad at that. Uh, so so that uh, yeah yeah and that's what I did. How long did you have the railroad job? Oh, until I retired. Uh, and I retired early. I, I, I retired after uh, how many years? I forget now, but it's a minimum time. Uh, I didn't want to, I want to, so, so, so I, I retired early. I, I was 60, I was 62. Instead of being 65, I could, uh, I could retire early, so I did. I retired at 62 rather than waiting to 65. I wish I'd have waited, waited to 65 and I'd, I'd have had a bigger pension. But I didn't uh, do it. Mm -hmm. My pension's enough now. Yeah. Where, when you say you work on the railroad, where were you working? Were you working? Uh, in Cincinnati mostly. And sometimes I, uh, I got on that job, one job that I liked a lot was uh, uh, is that every day you work every day you go to Louisville one day and you come back the next. And I stayed on that job for 10 years. Uh, st same job. And you, you had a family too? You had kids? Huh? You had kids? Oh, Sorry. just one daughter. I have one daughter. She, she's uh, just 50, 59 years old yesterday and uh, on the 7th. And Se what did she, uh, did she... Uh, she got married. Did she have a job? Did, what did she end up doing? Oh, she she, uh, she she stayed in real estate, and she's still in. in uh, she just retired now from real estate, and, uh, but she made a whole big bunch of money in the real estate thing because she she really knew her real estate. I remember when she she had a son, and uh, she had to uh, she was she came to Cincinnati. Uh, downtown Cincinnati, they had a big convention for uh, people that, uh, real estate people, and she told them all about mortgages. She's a mortgage lady. And uh, so she, uh, she made a whole bunch of money working, and I didn't know she made that much money. $80,000 a year. Can, can you imagine one of your kids making that much money a year? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And boy. Uh, well, I hate to I hate to break this up, but we just ran out of uh, time. Time. But uh, I want to take this opportunity. Okay, thank to, you. Thank you, George. It's All right. a pleasure yeah, you being I'm, my I'm friend. Fun and, to listen to. <laughs> and want to thank you for your service. Okay. And uh, thank you for allowing us to have this interview. Okay. Yeah, thank thank you. you.